chicken. So this is our event. This is the third day of our Nibas again, 2021. And this session, actually, we have four honorable speakers. And this um, title is um, Humanizing Education, Makashi Kansharia Dimension Perspective. So that's all. There is each and every uh, today the speaker and the speaker at the time. But before the starting, I just uh, started with the Surah Al Fatiha, then we will start our program today. <coughs> Okay. 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 So, society and world perspective, it is whole sustainable development, growth, research and innovation. In this perspective, we are talking about the human, humanizing education. So, every society needs to the particular philosophy. And based on the philosophy on education, for social progress, government and social institution, they can be bigger role playing and success on education by actually the permitting the certain realistic some goal in the society. So, we are now passing since last almost the two years passing, while is passing some challenging COVID-19 pandemic. And here is the common discussion that's why the forecasting of our uh, de democratic citizenship, leadership, even characteristics of formulation of achieving the goal of the national integration. And we need to the moral or spiritual value and building the social capital. That's why rapid changes have already been introduced by the Industrial Revolution 4.0. So IR 4.0, that's why include the internet and things, IoT, big data, even artificial intelligence. So cloud computing, even your intelligence, robotic, etc. So in this context, how we humanize the student experience in our education system should be priority objective. So that's why the objective may be summarized into the four aims, manpower, mind, machine, and markets. So based on that, we are concluding education is more than studying examination for ultimate employability and satisfying industry needs. Character formation, competency in leadership and competency in a profession can be 3C. Another priority in the this advanced and technology innovation with principles of Makashi Dal Sharia dimension. So for that the purpose IIM has already been taken some greater initiative through this KPI for university lecturer administrator. This aim is humanizing education for reforming Muslim mentality and Islamic revealed knowledge and human sciences in positive manner. It fosters Islamization among the intellectual professionals and scholars integrating to the qualities and faith, knowledge and even good character in holistic way for this progress education system and the progress of Muslim community world. So education with soul and located with value and wisdom can nature of humanizing process that make individual and professional to achieve sustainable development goal. Therefore, uh, there must be understand the responsible self and its life to progress making choose and whether itself to the other way. So without further any delay, we have the four speaker in this morning. 
that is each speaker we are considering 15 to 20 minutes. After that we have a Q&A session, but it is a long session. So that's why, therefore, we are ready without delay. We are uh, going to the speaker, our honorable four speaker. The first speaker I'm inviting, I would like to invite to the Dato Hamidun Abdul Hamid for valuable talk, humanizing education with Makashid Al Shadia perspective. Thank you, Dato. Please come. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala man wa ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, thank you very much for to the clear for inviting me. Uh, my fellow and the dean, the new dean. Congratulations. Right, brothers of Jastri. And also the uh, other panel members. Eh? There are three more panel members, inshallah. Stads uh, Nick and also our student. And... Uh, uh, the, 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 the topic is, is uh, relevant, current, for those who follow the uh, countries who are into uh, SDGs. Most of the Muslim countries basically are still thinking about the survival, but other countries, usually the first world country, so-called first world country, are already thinking about what is outside their realm of uh, uh, survival into uh, the sustainability of the whole world as well and we are going to follow suit and uh, perhaps inshallah uh, with our leadership it will be something else so the paradigm the paradigm first paradigm that we have is uh, the sdgs this is the human uh, decision a human uh, conceptual that they came together after the mdg the millennial uh, what do you call it, uh, development goal. Then they said we can do better than that. Let's look overall 360 degree and they came out with the SDG with 17 uh, SDG and I think the, the, the countries that became the, uh, the pro time committee are about 30 countries including some Muslim countries. So now when you look at things, it seems that uh, the SDG is because they see the part where the human being as a complete human being. What are the competency, what are the domains that made up the homo sapiens? Homo sapiens being, uh, can, can, you can translate as uh, the wise man. But because, uh, this is the first paradigm. The second paradigm is that uh, why do we need this humanizing aspect? What has happened? Uh, Stas mentioned about no, uh, education without soul, university without soul, but it seems in one point of time, human being, and still is, and a group who, are, who wants it to be pro propagated still, uh, we call it the secular materialist. And after that, cabang-cabang lah, the branches of what happened down there, postmodernism, this sort of thing and so on. And, uh, for them, things that are material, that's worth. Not immaterial thing, there's nothing to it, right? And and these are not uh, the majority of the world. This doesn't form the big population of the human being, but the majority of the human being. If you ask now, how many people of the world are, has a religion? You will, might be surprised. They, some uh, data say it might go up to ninety percent of the human species are religious i mean they believe in something that is outside the material thing but the secular materialists are being given the mainstream narrative that it becomes the uh, the, the meter rule and everyone has to talk but this is our mistake those who believe they don't put forward the thing we just uh, get into the same groove and we carry on so now we come to the stage where the whole human being felt that but human being is not this. We are not only physical beings. So even now, even now, uh, my friend in uh, in university science uh, Malaysia, uh, Prof. Abdul Halim Aziz, an astronomer, dah pencih macam saya lah. But he said he have met uh, uh, what they call it uh, atheists, right? Who does not believe in God? They claim. 
but they believe in something supernatural, something outside the physical being, the metaphysical aspect. So they have to accept that in, in the end. So you might find that the paradigm is that we allow the other part, the, the, the materialist, to have the, 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 the narrative. So now we have to go back and look at it. So, and, and Alhamdulillah, after all this, it come here and USM started the Sustainable uh, Development Goal for its campus and for... And then the, uh, Tan Sri Zul has brought this idea of uh, sustainability and looking at the practice of some other places where you have Ikigai in Japan, you have uh, Lagom in Sweden and you have uh, Ubuntu in Africa, South Africa and so on, which form like the, the basic worldview, the indigenous basic worldview towards life as a whole, towards human being in life. So Ikigai is to achieve something higher than that higher than the, the physical being and you found the basis for the Bushido code of Japan of the samurai and then you have uh, Lagom whatever is enough what is enough is enough you don't go overboard about it just enough and then also when you have the, the South African uh, Ubuntu that you are and I am you know we are the community I am part of that community so we share everything so this sort of thing and then here, that is why the concept of sejahtera, because that is the indigenous thing that we have. All right? That we concept of sejahtera in our culture, in Nusantara culture. Right? If you go back to India, you might want something, something else, because the Indian uh, Vedic uh, education, you look into educational history, that the, 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 the moving up of the, of the, step of the maqam or, or, or the position is where then they, they achieve in the end freedom, the spiritual freedom which they call moksha, right? So this is something also not physical, it is also metaphysical. So we propose the sejahtera or this is propose the sejahtera dimension, the sejahtera concept, the sejahtera uh, mechanism to achieve this humanizing aspect. So to bring back the education if we look, uh, at the definition. Can we go to the next slide? If we look at the, the thing that we have to define, right? I'm going fast now. I'm going to, I try to finish in 15 minutes. Right? We have to define education. Education uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, as a function is to give to the new generation what we have and to uh, train them to be move one step further in order to have our sustainable community that we have for example the Malaysian community we give them the education enough for them to survive and be better to bring forward the Malaysian uh, culture, the Malaysian psyche, the Malaysian worldview and so on and so forth and education also mean on the global aspect, on the human aspect is that to, uh, to bring up, to nurture a person to achieve the optimum of his uh, capability, the competences and the uh, potential that he has to bring up to the atom. This is an old, an old uh, definition, Eridal Taba in the uh, 1960s, one of the classic books in uh, education and curriculum uh, design. And humanizing, as, under, as I've said just now, is to bring back that the human being can uh, achieve satisfaction quote and unquote can achieve fulfillment of the all faculties that he have right and the next one we want to look to understand the thing is that the maqasid sharia right so what is it so this is the objective of sharia the ulama this is not something that is in the quran or something in the hadith but the ulama has made his tintash and in the end they said that the whole of our sharia the objective about it is to preserve the five things. Now, understanding of protect and preservation, this is something I'm going to bring later on. And dimensions, you didn't say the Sharia points or the Makassi Sharia element. You're saying dimension, that is uh, not only the numerical uh, number there, it also means a, a range, a dimension. So that's why in the way the idea of Daruriyat, the idea of Hajiyat and the idea of Tasiniyat. If you have the basic of the minimum in number of the five things, but in each thing you have the 
uh, but the the qualitative section or the qualitative dimension of uh, what is dororiat, what is hajiat, right? What is what you need? It must be there. What is important and what is tahsiniat, embellishment. Okay, so these are the things that we want. So uh, humanizing education is to bring the new generation up to be able to carry what are the things that we as human beings need and to carry forward to sustain it all right and in that matter is it shari is it what is the position of the uh, sharia about it okay so we said the maqasid dimension because sometimes there are things that is not there in the nusus not there in the uh, justification in Quran or, or, or Sunnah where we have to make decision for example for example in the future a hundred years time right in hundred years time there is no more oil and so on and so forth the source of energy will be something else might not be uh, 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 the efficacy might not be the same but among the thing that has been uh, uh, suggested uh, they call it bio machines right human beings who are genetically uh, mutated to grow to be nurtured and to grow up to become strong in body to carry weights and so on according to specialization so what is the position of sharia right so this is a, this is the thing that among the things that need to be uh, understood a man who was born blind right and then because of the uh, the, 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 the advances advances in stem cell research and using nanotechnology where you don't have to do uh, you have to do operation so your nanobots inside your body three million or four million of them can do internally uh, growing up the stem cell for the eyes and an eye grow so is this changes to the creation of Allah or is it not? These are the things that are coming out. So we have to prepare our new uh, our new generation in their education to be fulfilled in all the human potential and then to go out and to really become the Khalifa of the world. I'll go some more into it because I'm going to talk as well into the uh, civilization type 1, type 2 as well. Inshallah if there's time. Can we go to the next slide? Oh. Okay, so uh, to just to recap back to ABC, the education in Islam, as far as we consult to this stage up to the time of Al Ghazali, and after that you have more details. You find that uh, tarbia, right? The concept of tarbia it uh, encompasses ta'lim, which is cognitive uh, knowledge, right? Ta'lim to give, to teach, and then there's also the concept of ta'dib. Right, the concept of ta'adib Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu in Najat al said that Alimu uh, li sab'in, teach them for seven years wa adibu li sab'in, right? And then teach them akhlaq, give them adab for the next seven years wa sahibu li sab'in, and the next seven years until they are 21, be their friends. Okay, so the, our tarbiya consists of giving knowledge consists of teaching, inculcating good akhlaq, ta'dib and tahzib is another aspect which people say this is sophistic but it is the uh, purification of the internal self of your niya, of your ikhlas, of being true to yourself so these are part of the Islamic uh, tradition in education can we go to the next slide? as such we can see that uh, Al Ghazali's view that the, the human faculties consist of your body, and this has got, you, you have uh, uh, you have a responsibility of it. You have akal, your cognitive self. You have qalbu, you have qalbu, your your feeling, your conviction, your yakin, and new 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 studies on the heart has mentioned about the thinking cell, the cognition cell. They call it new rights. Forty thousand of them. So and then you have the nafs your cells, the self, and then you have your ruh, the spirit. So this is the faculties of the human being. We can go in detail later on uh, in other classes. 
So in psychology, we can divide that the physical side, the physics is already there, and including is the physiological aspect. And then in Akal, you have the cognition, the cognitive aspect. Kalb, you have the cognition and the affective and the spiritual, right? Nafs is basically spiritual. Roh, they ask you about the Roh, tell them that, you know, uh, the Roh is from the affairs of the Lord and they don't know, uh, they did not have knowledge except very little. Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay. So, that is at that point, uh, Islamic. And then, now, what is education now, as mentioned about uh, by our brother, that in the future with uh, IR4 and then with uh, AI and some more and more, you know, even now using what they call it, uh, using technology, uh, human machine interface, you find that now in the war planes, in the attack airplanes of America, of China, of uh, those countries who are. Uh, of Russia, those countries who are advanced in the avionics, you find that all the controls are now in their helmet that they wear, and the interface between uh, the helmet, the, the, the what do you call it, the sensor, and the, the, the parts of the brain that do that thinking is already there. You don't even have to press the button to fire. You just think about firing, and it will go. So this is thing is happening now in the military and. It, things are getting uh, uh, cheaper and cheaper and technology move on the exponential curve. It is not a gradient, it is an exponential curve. So you might find that later on our homo sapien, the wasp man, will have become something else. So especially with enhancement, with, with you become another bog, you become an android sort of being, right? Enhance. Uh, Later on, you'll be connected to the internet, not through your fingers, but straight away through your, your headband or this sort of thing. So, the concept is that we are going to produce Homo Sejahtera. And we said, mentioned uh, Dulu, we mentioned, you have mentioned that Homo Sejahtera is a man that is in Sejahtera mode. Sejahtera mode means holistically balanced. Uh, Tan Sri Zol has brought out the idea of spices here. Yeah? And when I look at it, I see that is the micro part, the macro part. The micro part is the self and also the rope to Allah. The micro part is when you have dealings with the rest and with your environment. So in spices, you look at the spiritual aspect, you look at the physical, psychological aspect, you look at the intellectual aspect, the thinking, you look at the cognitive aspect, the retention of knowledge, you look at the cultural uh, intelligence, you look at ethical, emotional, ecological, economic and societal dimension. So you have the internal, then the external. And you have balance in all this, then you become in San Sejahtera. And Prof. Kamal in his book explaining about Sejahtera, the closest thing to uh, the Islamic terms, uh, the traditional Islamic term, not to say Sejahtera is not Islamic, Islamic terms are meaning that in the traditional books, the closest to it is uh, the, the concept of Al-Falah. Right? Al-Falah. Muflihun fi dunya and the real Falah is an Akhirah. So this is another uh, area which even discussing about this homo thing because I call ourselves, all of us, each and everyone, uh, actually we are homo paradiso. Right? Because we are men of paradise. We are people of paradise. Okay, and that's another lecture, inshallah. So the mechanism is based, you know, based, there's a mechanism for it. Based on the letters of 1996, the education must be lifelong. And the pillars now that we have to see in order to have, it is humanistic. There is the learning to know, learning to do, learning to live together, learning to be. And this, each one can be explained, inshallah. Our Ustaz uh, Nick will be explaining uh, about this. And... Another thing that is uh, uh, that, that in the Sejahtera concept is that that education must be transformative. So we must have, you're asking about whether it is uh, individual or communal. Individual, yes, we have to achieve individually, but malati muwajib ila bi fahuwa wajib, whatever is not wajib that is not fulfilled except that, that something, that that something becomes wajib. So if an individual to seek knowledge is from birth until death, then you have to prepare the ecosystem. 
to seek knowledge. So that is the uh, responsibility of the community of the state to establish the ecosystem for transformative uh, process of education. So that is why now we can find that all of us are being asked to go into uh, CE, Community Engagement for that transformative ecosystem. Can we go to the next one? So I will be uh, going back. So from us, when we put into looking at our IIUM, right, you have Sejahtera, when you look also at the uh, Falsafah Pendidikan Negara, okay, and then uh, you have IIUM looking at IIUM missions, the seven missions and so on. You've, I call this the indigenous strain. This is the strain of, uh, boleh panggil benang mas dalam kain songket tu. Benang mas yang disulam, yang nampak kecantikan dia. The, our own uh, khair, right, which is uh, what they call it, khalifa. Khalifa tak ada. I think the khalifa is the been dropped somewhere. Khalifa that we see ourselves as the Khalifa, the human being, the one who is going to lead the rest, and then the Amana, the rest of the creation, I mean, and then the Amana that we have, and then the process for Ikhra for our cognitive, and then not only we are the leader, but we are the mercy to all Alamin, right? All creations, okay? So this is the part that we have to do when we look into. Uh, sustainable, uh, we will look into humanizing education. For us Muslims, you have to add this. This has got to be in there as well. Can we go to the next one? So, how do you blend? Right? Abdul Hamid Abdul Sulaiman Al Marhum has mentioned in his book Al Asala Al Mu'asara. So, this is part of uh, Islamization. Al Asala Al Mu'asara, there is something new, and then you enroot it back to your uh, original uh, the Islamic deed. All right. So this is Islamization, part of Islamization, one of the uh, steps to do Islamization. Then the other concept, how do you blend is we now we have, for example, interdisciplinary uh, department. All right. But it is not enough because interdisciplinary only uh, consider blending two methodology together. Right. Or, or, or making use of the methodology of one uh, discipline. All right, impose upon another discipline. We need right now, especially when you look into the SDGs and the experience, the, 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 the experience of how to achieve the SDGs, you need transdisciplinarity, which is the mode, your mode of thinking, your mode of being of being. When, when you look at something, it is something not because of one area. When you look at you are an economist, when you look at something, you start to think about the economic part, right? What about the social part? What about the psychological part? What about the scientific part, the achievement? What about the environmental part? So, basically, I would like to quote from uh, uh, from uh, Pablo Tigani. Pablo Tigani is, uh, you know, the, the transdisciplinarity in, in the South America is something big now. Okay, Pablo Tigani said that it is the art of combining several sciences in one person. A transdisciplinary scientist trained in various, is trained in various academic disciplines. This person merged all his knowledge into one thick wire. The united knowledge wire is then used to solve problems that include many problems. A decision of a transdisciplinary executive is the only one that takes into account the total resolution of a problem. When I read this, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of, uh, I'm not a fan, I'm a student or not even a student, I'm one who reads, for example, people like uh, Al-Ghazali, and then especially when we go into his book Al-Mustasfa, and read in the, in the in his Muqaddiba introduction, we'll see that this is it, this is the reflection of transdisciplinarity. You know, when people are taking, for example, they were mentioning when uh, 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 our doctor yesterday talked about giving tafsir and so on and so forth, when people are mentioning about tafsir ma'asur and tafsir bi ra'i and so on and so forth, Al Ghazali mentioned Allah gave you the brain, and if that brain can see something in the ayah, right, in the ayah that is applicable and that is not outside of sharia, 
Then that is called ilham, or that is called ingenuity. So you should accept it. So the meaning of that ayah plus that new thing. And I would like to bring example later on. You want to discuss ayah like uh, the definition of la tamfuzuna illa bi sultan in Surah Rahman, right? That you will not be able to cross it, to penetrate it, except with uh, sultan, except with power. So these are among the things that I would like to bring into discussion for uh, when we think about the, uh, what they call it, uh, humanizing education and preparing for the future. I think basically I'm stopping there, inshallah. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Dato, for your terrible uh, speak about the humanizing education. So. Before I go to the next uh, speaker, just I briefly explain uh, about the Dr. Uh, no need, they know me already. Most of them know me already. Yes. <laughs> so, okay, we, we have the time is constrained, so we are going to the new uh, second speaker, which is uh, um, Assistant Professor Dr. Nick M. Disciple Azizi, being Nick Abdullah. He is also presently Deputy Dean, International Institute of Islamic Thought and Civilization. And his early education, he did PhD, Doctor of Philosophy from International Islamic University of Malaysia, uh, 2014. And he did Master's Islamic Studies from University of Malaysia, Malaysia in 2009. So, welcome actually, uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Nick, the uh, MD Saiful for deliver the valuable speech on humanizing education. Please. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can I share my slide? You can see the slide, but it's not in the pre uh, no. presentation mode. I also share with the committee, the committee share the slide. I think we, we can see the Dr. Dr. Nick punya slides ni. Nampak dekat screen. Oh, nampak. You just ha, have nampak. to press the slide view lah. Yang ada button tu, di lambang screen tu. Ha. Okay, ha, cantik. Alhamdulillah. Tapi pihak tak ada orang tu tadi kan? Rumah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson, Moderator, Prof. Hassan al Haq. Uh, my respected colleagues, speakers, uh, uh, Prof. D uh, Associate Prof. Dean, Dr. Amidun, and Brother Muhammad Zahid, and respected professors, brothers and sisters. First and foremost, I would like to express my appreciation and gratitude to the great committee, especially Dr. Zul, Jasri, and everyone who helped the session run smoothly and orderly. Uh, answering uh, the question, why is this subject uh, humanizing education with Maqas Sharia donation very important with the IEM committee? Let me start uh, with the Maqas Sharia first. Answering to this question, um, as we know, there are categories of objectives of Sharia. We call it Maqasid Sharia. There are three: Dururiyat, Hajiyat, and Tahsiniyat. Essential, Intimentary, and Embellishment. Uh, in Maqasid Sharia, Allah Tijaa Al Islamu Biha, 
Ifzu abdaruriyat al-khams. As we know, there are five daruriyat essential in maqasir al-shari'a. Hifzu al-deen, hifzu al-nafs, hifzu al-aqal, hifzu al-ard, hifzu al-man. Preservation and protection of deen, uh, protection of uh, religion, protection of al-nasab, protection of al-aqal, protection of al-man, protection of al-nasab. Al Al as well. Preservation of protection uh, and protection. Uh, have the deen, uh, as we know, uh, just uh, as religions build and enhance our vertical bond with our Allah, our Creator, who is the absolute and most sublime being. And uh, it's laid down to the values, norms, and rules that shall govern our behavior and action in regulate to our horizontal relationship. Hablu min Allah wa hablu min Interaction with fellow human beings and the natural world with all the exist uh, therein. Number two, preservation and protection uh, and nafs, and life. Uh, life. Hibzul, nafs. Meaning protection of an nafs or self-preservation uh, means instability of the human self from its material and from uh, moral element by establishing its origin, which is the exist on which the architecture of the world or of the earth revolve. And the meaning of this agreement is realized in the Holy Quran. Allah Ta'ala said, وَأَنْشَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ وَاسْتَعْمَرَكُمْ فِيهَا he created you from the earth and made you responsible too. As it is preserved physically, moral, and spiritual, and it is a total and partial dimension. And self-preservation uh, manifests itself into two aspects. Preserving it from the aspect of existence and preserving oneself from the side of nothingness. So, anafs extend beyond the human self to include other life forms. The above verse and also the in other other verse, هو الذي أنش وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إن جاءنا في الأرض خليفة خليفة. Just some of the verse which made explicit this aspect of protection and preservation of life. Next, uh, preservation of al aqal in so the mind, al-aqal, is the condition of the responsibility given by Allah to human beings. Without having a sound mind, Allah will never give trust, amana, to humans. Uh, like the, the children, the, the people are sleeping, or a sleeping person or insane, is not accountable while he or she in this stage or in this condition. Hence, uh, preserving the mind functioning well becomes a necessity a necessity in our life. That's why Quran and Sunnah stress on the use of the mind for the purpose of thinking and reflecting to achieve benefit for humanity and protecting them from harms. And individual minds, the ownership of humanity. So we have to preserve it directly, public interest toward Rahmatan Alamin. Uh, next, uh, that's why uh, IUM, uh, plan and implement academic framework or academic programs and courses have to adopt an integration approach and lead students to success in this life and the hereafter, the life to come. Through delivering the quality holistic for the student, uh, cultivate Islamic commitment, to develop student uh, Islamic personality and the identity. Uh, next, preservation and protection of mal wealth. In the context of the IUM as a Jamaah in Sania and an international center of educational excellence, 
IUM has to exert its utmost efforts to prevent an, any financial or wealth misuse or abuse and optimize in using or in, in fulfilling the vision and mission of the university. So IUM community should be made aware that zakat, sadaqat, and wakaf are essential, essential form or fundamental support for the university, uh, as it was also the primary sources of funding in Muslim history for educational institution. Uh, the last one, but not least, preservation and protection of an nasal line age. The preservation or and discarding or preservation line age or progeny start in the prenatal stage of existence does not wait until human being are born. Uh, another term that is directly connected to the nasal, also namely term of nasab. Uh, nasab which has also been used in the Quran and frequently mentioned by Muslim scholars in conjunction with an nasab. So nasab embodies the essential, the important natural bond of blood relationship between parents and children, whereby the letter are properly attributed to the former. It does give rise by primary layer or immediate constitute of the family system, which include the spouse and their essential. And may also include their residence. From emerge the sense of dissidence and belonging in the heart and mind of the children and that of owning the Prolongation at the level of the parent. All these are little briefing about the application of Makal Sharia in our context in IUM. So, this subject is very important because it related to the Insan Sejahtera, uh, specifically IUM in Sejahtera Academic Framework. It is grounded on the university vision and mission and the Falsafah Pendidikan Kebahasaan. As we know, the several Uh, key element about the FPK, uh, which are the development of individual. There are four domains potential, Jerry, uh, Jerry, uh, namely physical, just money, emotional, MOC, spiritual, Rohani, and intellectual. The university expand this access, uh, this concept to include the Islamic philosophy of education, which are Hamba Allah, H, Alam Sekitar, A, and Social as Jerry Has, to be referred uh, as Jerry Has. Number, number two, uh, in a holistic, comprehensive, and integrated manner, and uh, with the aim to produce a complete or perfect insan, we call it insan kamil. And the uh, the last one, but not least, is uh, who has firm belief and faith in God, is obedient and devoted to Him. Uh, my respected colleagues, uh, so IUM embodies this under the concept of instant sejahtera. So to realize this noble aim, to realize this noble aim, the developmental domains of the individual, uh, specifically physical, emotional, spiritual, intellect, Social, environmental, and servant of Allah, we call it Jerry Has, need to be well developed to their full potential and align to the Islamic values and principle based on Quran and Sunnah through the theory and practice of a balanced and integrated curriculum and co curriculum. Uh, what is fostered from such a curriculum would be individuals who possess good health. Are physically fit and energetic. The how has have harmonious and stable emotions, pure and strong spirituality, a positive mind, high consciousness, are deeply knowledgeable and wise. These individuals are to be educated within the integrated concept of knowledge and education for mastering both the written knowledge and the 
and uh, derives human human knowledge and uh, to recognize the mind of both type of knowledge uh, next to complete the education process uh, student akhlaq values skills and attitudes need to be given careful attention to uh, and integration curriculum such as if you will be able to produce insan sejahtera or insan kamen will not only attain his or her kesejahteraan diri but to spread it out to enable the society the environment and the nation kesejahteraan as an insan sejahtera uh, one is responsible sejahtera person uh, one is responsible to contribute to the advancement and the betterment for all aspects of one life, whether economic, politics, or social, or one family, society, and nation, as well as world. More importantly, in one individual to fulfill deep responsibility, one has to limit facade or destruction. So the instance jatra shall always strive to development. Strive for development, not for material gain alone but rather to the kesejahteraan to the society this idea of limiting facade is equivalent to the idea of sustainable development the vision and promotion of the five peace uh, namely peace people play uh, property planet and partnership my respected brothers and sisters Hence, uh, IIUM lecturers, small bees, decide uh, teaching students to excel in their academic studies or to become expert in their area of studies, need to also focus on student capabilities, resilience and strength of critical, creative and innovative, uh, through internalization of values and uh, making good and fine judgment, uh, resolving problems and crisis, and also development of pro-social behaviors. The aspiration of the FPK, uh, specifically in line with the vision and mission of IIUM, is to nurture IIUM graduates who are responsible and just toward the society and environment and the owner. So this is we call achieving total success, al-falah, in the world and the hereafter. Although FPK also may be seen as a local to Malaysia, okay, uh, with its specific reference to the Malaysian citizen, but the spirit is not localized and is applicable to all IIM students. So the FPK does not detract from the Islamic philosophy application, uh, which continue to be the basis of the mission and vision of the university. FPK though is explicitly include the staff, just the right academic framework, because it provides a concise and common objective which may be shared with all Malaysian and non malaysian alike. So all the matters that uh, what has been stated before is related to our subject today, which is related to humanizing the education and maqasid sharia. Both cannot be separately. Uh, thank you. I give it to the Mr. Jefferson. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nick, for your valuable uh, speak also regarding this actually the humanizing education with this perspective of uh, Makashi Dal Sharia. So now, this is the, I'm inviting to our third speaker, which is coming from our student representative, that is. Uh, 
Brother Jahid Muslim bin Jasmani. He shot uh, brief about him. He did actually the Bachelor of Accounting from our School of Economics and Management Sciences. It is 2019 until 2021. And presently, he is the President of Economics and Management Science Society, EMSS, 2020 and 2021. And even though he is also representative, Mahalla representative committee uh, from 2017 to 2018. So now I'm inviting Dr. Jahid, please deliver your valuable <coughs> speech. Thank you very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh uh, First of all, thank you Prof. Uh, Hassanul Haq uh, as our moderator and thank you for all the committees for this Ibadah Camp uh, for your, your uh, hard work having this program and thank you for inviting me and it's also an honor to be uh, in the same sessions with our wise and knowledgeable uh, speaker uh, Datuk Hamidun, Dr. Nick and also Dr. Gair Zazmi So insyaAllah uh, my speech is uh, not more about theoretically because before we have uh, heard a lot from uh, Datuk Hamidun and also Dr. Nick so insyaAllah my presentation or my uh, my sharing after this is maybe more simple uh, a simple sharing from me but I hope it's uh, very important lah to be pointed about okay okay so the first slide is uh, when we talk about humanizing education uh, it's also a great idea uh, humanizing education we need it's not only about the lectures but it also to include all uh, people that related to the to this system to the education system so it's also um, include students and uh, academic staff uh, i mean iium administration and also all related to the education system and related to the iium so uh, in short humanizing education is connecting education with the lived experience of both learners and educators so we move to the next slide okay um, so before we further discuss uh, on my presentation we need to see uh, our future quality education so we want to achieve the sustainable goal the fourth one which is the quality education and we hope by 2030 these goals are being applied by most of our of the university and our education system applied in IIUM will be a relevant one inshallah okay next uh, next slide so be, before we go further into the discussion about humanizing education uh, it is a worth, uh, worth mentioning about the practical viewpoint on how human as material being can live as spiritual being so first we, we need to see uh, how we live as material being yeah uh, like that to Hamidun said uh, just now uh, Ustaz, Ustaz Hamidun said before this before uh, a lot of people they have their own belief but do we live as a spiritual being okay and as a mature being uh, we know like usual we eat we sleep we do like other people okay but uh, this same goes to animals Okay, so what differentiates Earth with all other creatures? So I think it's very important for us to live as spiritual being, which is to live according to our fitra. We know our fitra. Uh, when we learn about fitra, our fitra is we know we uh, we have 
we have the creator okay but islam uh, show who is our real creator which is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have we have our own belief and we need to apply the concept of deen which comprise all human action and belief and for the aspect of practical viewpoint the most important one is we need to know the ultimate goal is to earn mardotillah okay i think this um is sound cliche but it's, it's very very important lah okay because somehow um some people may may think that their ultimate goal is to have uh, to be a successful people or maybe have their own organization or maybe have a big business sustainable business but we need to refer back to our own uh, objective of life which is we are a human being we need to earn the redha of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also maintaining maintaining islamic value in everyday life because we are the khalifa we need to do good in in the dunya and spread the positivity towards others and all action are to earn the blessing from allah uh, we can be students lecturers uh, administration uh, staff and everything but if we relate back all our deeds to be uh, for the blessing of allah for to have the please from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so inshallah all our deeds even is like our daily life it will be rewarded by him inshallah so next slide okay um, so this just uh, my my sharing my point of view on how the guidelines on how to live as spiritual being so the first one the very important one is uh, the learning process is a never ending process we need to learn and learn from our from our younger age until we die okay so from the f- the first ever revelation come read in the name of your lord who created so this is the first one so it should the that islam lays great emphasis on the importance of learning and learning so what i want to emphasize here is that um as a human being to live as a spiritual being we need to seek more learn more learn in depth about din about uh, our religion okay so because uh, we have al quran as a guideline so um and it's a uh, a long journey to learn to learn everything about islam so the process of learning is uh is for the whole uh, our life the second one is to the setting ultimate goal which is based on the hadith the, the deeds depend on our intention so what i want to emphasize here is that okay Thank you. Um Okay. So the setting ultimate goal, okay. Uh like I just said before, uh our ultimate um we need to have the ultimate goal of our life as a khalifa. What we need to do in this world, what is the purpose of our life as a human being? Uh what where we want to go? uh after this okay um let's say if i go to school i give a very example uh very simple example let's say if i go to school i go to school to see my friends okay so i will get to see my friends but let's say my friends didn't come so i feel bad for that day let's say i come to school with the intention uh uh i want to go to class because i know come to come to class is compulsory and if i not go to the class uh, i will be expelled i will be barred or something okay but it's different if i go to school because i want to seek knowledge okay so this come uh, how our mind and our heart to feel eager or passionate on what we are doing okay but it's also different if i want to go to school to seek knowledge uh, for 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 earn the redha of Allah so is uh, the other dimension we learn we know 
by the end of the day, I will learn something. But by learning something, what is the purpose of we learning new things? Which is we want to contribute to other people. We want to share to other people and so on. Okay. And then the third one, being kind toward others. Okay. This is the part in is in our dean we call is amal. So we have learned a lot uh, in our life. We know our objective. Uh, we have the learning process. Okay. And this part is. Uh, the part where we want to contribute to other people, we want to contribute to the society. So based on the uh, ayat of Quran, so hasten towards all that is good. Fasta bikul khairat. So we need to maintain a good relationship with Allah and all the humankind. So I think this the uh, the role as a Khalifa in this world. And the last one not least, connect, connecting with our Lord. Okay, uh, it is the fourth one, but I think it's the most uh, important one this um, is related to tawbah or maybe uh, uh, we call also reflecting ref do a self reflection okay after we have done our day okay we need to reflect whether is this day is better than yesterday and what i need to improve for yes uh, for tomorrow okay so this part is like uh, we want to improve something because uh, I think based on the hadith, right? We need to do a hadith or call call of ulama. We need to do better, better day by day, okay. And very, and also I stated here very really in the remembrance of Allah, do hard, do hard, find rest. So uh, let let us ask ourselves when is the last time uh, we talk to uh, our creators. Okay, so if we relate back all these four elements, all these four guidelines, uh, I would like to give like a analogy like we are an agent for a mission. We have we need to do like a mission, right? Okay, so first of all, we need to know what is the mission is about. So so then we can we know uh, what we need to prepare. Okay, and the second one, we need. To know the objective of the mission, okay, what we need to achieve to accomplish the mission, and the third one we need to execute the plan, and the fourth one we need to reflect what we need to improve to be better lah, to be a better agent. So it same goes to our life, and our life is much bigger from just a mission. Our daily life is a mission as a Muslim, okay. So it start from we every day we learn we resetting our ultimate goal and then we we do all the good deeds and the last one at least we reflect everything so it's like a cycle from day to day uh, to uh, to be i think this one is the practical uh, idea to live as a spiritual beings okay so uh, before we go uh, discussion about the humanizing education uh, Hadis narrated by Atamizi, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, The world with all that it contains is a curse except for the remembrance of Allah and religious scholars and seekers of knowledge. Sorry. Okay. How's that? <laughs> okay. We go to the next slide. Okay, I received the question about... Uh, the comparison between Islamization of knowledge and humanizing education. So, I think uh, one of the mission of IIUM is Islamization, and we have uh, we have learned this word a lot: Islamization of knowledge. Okay, but here comes the car the current idea IIUM want to bring uh, to our students is humanizing education. So what? different of these two idea or these two uh, agenda okay so okay maybe uh, all the lecturers may argue with me but this is my point of view and this is my point of view my humble opinion so i think these two approach should be applied hand in hand both are important both uh, need to we need to apply both idea in order to to achieve a certain level 
on uh, our quality education. So the first one for Islamization of knowledge, I see it as a perspective of viewpoint, our world view on the knowledge. We need to see all uh, when we are learning something, we need to see what related to the Islam. Um, everything that we learn need to be consistent with the Shariat. We need uh, we need to be based on Al Quran and Al Sunnah. Okay. Um, that we learn about finance. Uh, what is Islam? What is uh, what the our Prophet practice finance system uh, uh, during during their time? Okay, even maybe they are n not similar to the current bank, but they are also implementing some uh, the the system or the idea of banking. And also, we need to believe that Islam encompasses everything. Okay. Islam is a complete din. Okay, uh, everything, sh uh, everything actually I think is based on Islam. Islam, Islam is our din, and uh, every knowledge should be accordance to Islam by applying concept of ad din, because we know the concept of ad din. Ad din is a shumul. Okay. So, uh, in summarization, in sum to summarize. Islamization of knowledge, um, everything that we learn, we need to see in the viewpoint of Islamic point of view. Okay, so next one for the humanizing education, I see humanizing humanizing education is about the system, education system. What kind of system we need to bring in our education system? So, in this one we need to include the humanizing system okay so the question arise how do we apply the information or knowledge we obtain and what out outcome do we expect from from the education system itself okay so the first one we go to the problem statement the consequences of education without humanity so the first one if uh, our students or maybe the learners they are uh, experiencing education without humanity, they will believe that certificate alone is enough to prove academic excellence. Uh, like um, during my research about this topic, uh, I found that our rector, our, our, rector, uh, our rector of IIM also said that uh, somehow people just see uh, education is about to fit into the demand of the industry, but not to solve uh, the problem that we face in this world. Okay, um, what is the very bad if we believe certificate alone is enough to prove academic excellence? The first one, some sometimes uh, we feel arrogance because we see that, uh, yeah, we know that not all have the privilege to to be in the university. This to be in the city, right? Okay, and then uh, somehow we limit the idea of excellence. People may be excellent in various uh, dimension. Okay, if we relate back to the uh, time of uh, our Sahaba, not all have uh, all of them have different role. Okay, not all become the front line, not all become the rulers, not all become the muhaddisun or the one that memorize al-quran there are also uh, people that work um, to see uh, the time for prayers okay so i think the word excellent is not limited only to academic excellence the second one is viewing education only as a mean to ensure job opportunities and good income so this one is uh, about materially uh, materiality okay so nowadays i think this what people or teenagers or students feel insecure even during our uh, our time studying we see a lot of people call like influencer they show off everything they ha they have big houses cars and everything so we think that our ultimate goal is to have that that kind of wealth, to have uh, also like them, uh, but if we see in the uh, 
if we experience a humani humanizing education, system, uh, education system with humanity, I think uh, the, the outcome is will be better. And the last problem statement, unable to apply virtues such as promoting integrity and avoiding corruption. Okay. Uh, when we learn without humanity, we will separate uh, what we learn and what we implement in our life. Because we think, let's say I'm an accounting student, I learn about integrity, uh, I learn about accountability. But do we think, do all accounting students think that uh, we need to apply integrity, accountability in our daily life? For a simple exam uh, example, do I need, as uh, I'm also a uh, student leader, do I need to apply accountability, integrity in my work as a president of MSS? Okay. And also, maybe um, we learn uh, also about efficiency. Okay. Um, like I see just now, maybe I just, just want to share to our lecturers. Okay. Um, so, somehow, student leaders will receive a lot of. Uh, Bantuan, uh, a lot of helps like like food help, financial aid. But the question here: Do these all student leaders play their responsibility to ensure that all these aids, this financial aids, this food aids, okay, uh, uh, apa, sampai get into those in needs, okay? Because somehow um, the system itself. They don't think about the system how to get the poor, but they just think to distribute. Okay, something like that lah. Uh, so it's not uh, to blame to all the donators. They have a good intention to give, but I think this is the responsible responsibility for the student leaders to make uh, the process, the, dis the distribution process, to be uh, efficient. Okay, so we move to the next slide. Uh, educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. At all. Okay, next slide. So we move to the next part. Key characters in humanizing education. So, so this is my humble opinion about educators. Uh, I think uh, we have a great, uh, good lecturers for our kulia, but this is just my point of view. What educators? need to play their role to realize the idea of humanizing education. So the first one, emphasize knowledge attainment as well as additional value and skills. So not only focus, uh, yeah, we know that lecturers need to convey uh, the, the lectures uh, about the subject and so on, but also need to focus on the value, uh, what on what we are learning. So somehow we ask students to reflect what this can relate to our daily life, what this can reflect to our job letter. And the second one, include assessment that indirectly educate students to learn additional skills. So I think um, our assignments, not only we do a discussion, but somehow we need to do a survey, we need to do some research, research and so on. Okay, to, in order to learn additional skills. And the third one, to ensure that students are able to learn to boost their confidence and professionalism apart from assessing student comprehension of their knowledge. I, uh, I like to share um, uh, one uh, example. Um, uh, I think this one is a, uh, apa, creative lah on how to assess their students. Despite of we give uh, examination, assignment, but uh, this one lecturer, she if I'm not mistaken, is uh, a woman lecturer lah. Uh, she assess their student based on interview session. Okay, so the interview their student. So even yeah, students can prepare beforehand about what what to talk. Okay, but I think from interview, um, at least they are thinking in their mind and they are expressing. Uh, not only we memorizing everything and just put it down on the exam papers. Okay. And there are also, um, okay, never mind, I will proceed for the next slide. <laughs> so the next slide, okay. So we, we go to the students. What do we need, uh, what 
basically student expectation. Maybe this the expectation or students, or maybe it could be what they are supposed to expect from humanizing education. So the first one to have a close relationship with our educators. Okay, um, and then to learn from unique or creative teaching styles. Okay, I will uh, is a worth 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 mentioning that uh, somehow people are more more uh, uh, passionate to learn in a unique or creative teaching style. For example, last time I remember, uh, I learned about contract, uh, about uh, what is uh, good and not good in contract just by playing a board game. Okay, I think even it's like a very a fun way we play just a game, but uh, the lecturers ask us to think, to ponder, okay, about because it's just game, but how we want to relate back to the real life. Okay, and then the third one to have healthy discussion and constructive arguments with our educators. Okay, I have experiencing the time in the class where the lecturers asking the students, um, but the lecturers are really asking, how, how I want to say, um, when the lecturers ask the students, it will it really want the answer from the students. They don't want. They they don't have. Uh, they are any skeptical or their their own idea about the answer. But really want uh, the answer from the students. And somehow, if the answer is not correct, they will help uh, the student to try to get the idea from their understanding, from the students' understanding itself. Okay, and then based on our expectation, we need somehow to prepare something. So as a student, we need to prepare to ready ready to think critically because in humanizing education we not just absorb everything we need to somehow to discuss or to think critically about the about what we learn and then we need to be enthusiastic to learn okay bold in voicing our opinion and willing to learn from mistakes because when we are willing to learn from mistakes uh, it makes us more bravery to do something to try something okay so next one okay as uh, the background of student leaders i think it's, it's also important to know uh, to mention about the role of student society so the first one to introduce student to career prospect program so here's where we we want a student to be enthusiastic about what they are learning what uh, what their career is about and also create programs allowing students to attain hand-on experience and values apart from enhancing one's critical thinking. Okay, the third one, encouraging students to learn new skills. Instill self-confidence and good spirit in students. So this, this comes the role of the society where we give them to learn, uh, to learn in a practical way, to be self-confident, to talk in a, in a group discussion with all the committee, to discuss what is the best for the program and to discuss what program need to be done for our students. And I think it's also very important to collaborate on IIUM flagship program. So uh, last time I discussed with Dr. Zuljasri and Dr. Iziani about IIUM flagship program. Uh, like before, I, uh, I don't really aware on that IIUM have their own flagship programs. Whereas the, this flagship program is organized by the lecturers and staff of IIUM, uh, but the uh, the participant is from the society itself. So I think it's very important uh, to involve both lecturers, staff, and also student in this flagship program because in this program, uh, the first one, lecturers and student can have a close relationship, and the second one, we can uh, in class we are we are learning something. But in this flagship program, we can see based on what we are learning, what we can provide to the society. And the last but not least, uh, to emphasize on adapt and ethics when interacting with, with the lecturer. So we are expecting to have a close relationship with lecturers, okay? But there are a certain border and limitation, lah. So to ensure that our student not. Uh, transpass the limitation. Okay.
Okay, to, su to summarize about educators, the relationship between ed educators and learners, I think when we talk about relationship or communication, uh, both two parties need to play their roles, the educators and the learner. Both, uh, both parties need to, uh, to know their role and play their role in order to have a good relationship. So, educator as a mentor or more be improving the gap between students and lecturers. So, what do we expect? Effective communication between lecturers and students can help both parties involved. Okay. So, for the lecturers part, encourage students to explore more than what the syllabus requires. For the student, inform lecturer if they need any assistance. Okay. And we hope that by then, we can have a safe space between lecturers and students to voice questions, concerns, and opinion. So, we are discussing the idea to have a close relationship between uh, students and lecturers. So, what is the method? Where is the manhaj, right? So, we look for the Kulia flagship projects. So, there are a lot of, uh, I think, if I know, there are a lot of initiatives from uh, the flagship IIM flagship project that involve uh, directly our lecturers, okay, promoting preserving and elevating basic social values within the communities. So the first one, uh, we have M Kitchen, where the objective of M Kitchen is assisting the needy with the soup kitchen program as well as creating employment opportunities. So we we involve our some of our students to be a part of this project. So we learn something. We do we do uh, pro, pro, this project together with our lecturers, and also uh, somehow from this project we learn some basic skills uh, to help those who are in need. Okay, the next one: sejahtera youth and single mother, which equip people with necessary entrepreneurial skills such as e-commerce and digital marketing and financial literacy management. Okay, I think this one is uh, interesting because. Um, maybe as uh, econ uh, KNMS students, our background we are familiar with uh, all financial term and so on. But for other people, maybe from different background from economics, they think uh, financial is very difficult. So it's very important to talk to them about financial literacy and also uh, to encourage them to to be uh, to have entrepreneurial skills. And the last one on the list, IIUM, OKU for you. There are a lot of program like Majlis Ramah Mesra bersama SP, uh, bersama pelajar. Okay, presentation of contribution for special glasses, meeting, and Majlis Ramah Mesra bersama dan OKU. So this uh, where we engage with the society, and also um, uh, it was uh, worth mentioning that uh, next week during the Ta'aruf week, like. Uh, who, uh, most of us have known we have Insan Sejahtera Insan Sejahtera for our kuliah and in this program we involve about 28 lecturers as part of the committee members so um, the committee at lecturers, the FACI will be from the lecturers and also from the students, so students and lecturers will work together to uh, to to welcome the new intake student for our kuliah. Okay, so I think from this example is where we, the platform for us to have a close relationship with our lecturers. Okay, and then to implement what we have learned in classes. Okay, to be to we see in a real life how based on what we are learning in class we can contribute to the society. So, and then to summarize. The benefits of this flagship program, um, applying role of flagship program is to apply knowledge and skill acquired in class, con connect with experience and struggle of the communities, be more mindful of those with more needs and struggle. And the way forward for IIUM flagship, I believe uh, this kind of program, kind of project need to be more commercialized. We need the help from uh, student leaders and other society to promote and to collaborate with huh? okay. and involve students as part of the managing committees. And my last slide, importance of managing communication so we can see um, in short, 
um, we need to have generation of people that work with their soul okay we need to know that uh we the education system based on our promoting the education system that artific- artificial intelligence that there are no artificial energy intelligence that can promote humanity better than human so i hope that's all for my presentation uh i hope based on my sharing today can be beneficial to all inshallah so that's all from me thank you And this is Associate Professor Dr. Kajarazmi Mat Ghani. He is the Pagan Dean, Kuli of Economics and Management Sciences. And he was the former Director of Academic Management and Admission Division from 2015 to 2021. His education actually very unified. Why I'm saying unified? Because he did all the education from the same places. BSc, MA and PhD, 1996, 1999 and PhD in 2006 from University of Southern California. All the degree from same places. He has so many achievements in terms of teaching, research, consultancy and other respect. But among the consultancy, the two consultancy we are indicating here, which is very timely uh, needed and important, that is, he got the patent consultancy from UNDP 2021, which is related to the finance, uh, development financial assessment and SDG budgeting and costing for Malaysia. And another one, 2020, from the same place UNDP funded understanding macroeconomic impact of COVID-19 building back better. So this is two valuable consultancy now he's carrying on. Now I'm inviting Honorable Dean to deliver the valuable speech. <laughs> okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Uh, Hamidun. Uh, Dr. Nick Muhammad Saiful and Brother Muhammad Jahid, uh, thank you for accepting the invitation from the uh, from the committee to be one of the member of this uh, panel talking about uh, humanizing uh, educations uh, for the ibadah camp for this uh, for this kuliah. I think this is the first time that uh, we invite a student to be a part of our a part of our ibadah camp and to give talk to ibadah camp. I'm not sure whether it's correct or not, but if I'm not correct, then you all can uh, can correct me. Uh, okay, so uh, the, the topic is on humanizing education, and yesterday we talked about Apple, so now you have the Apple for, for everyone. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so the topic about humanizing education, uh, Prof. Hassanul, uh, thank you uh, for the, uh, also for the introductions. Okay, Prof. Hassanu has given us uh, some uh, some question. Uh, okay. uh, we have talked about the uh, kind of like the what 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 really is the, what is uh, humanizing education and try to relate it to uh, to makasit makasit asharia. Even uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Nick using the term that I use in uh, for Makasit uh, in the translation of Makasit to English using the term that is in the in SAF okay, uh, preservation uh, preservation and protection of, of religion and everything uh, okay uh, what I'm supposed to talk about uh, when the uh, when Prof Hassan uh, give uh, us the topic uh, he, he, I think looking at the question he is uh, Trying to ask me to talk about what should the uh, what should the staff uh, what should the staff do? Uh, uh, we have a few talking about what should the educator do. Okay, but before uh, going to that, uh, in talking about education, uh, humanizing education, it is not just about the it is just not not just about the lecturers. 
Okay, if if we look at the uh, not sure what is the page in uh, uh, in the uh, in the soft book okay? when they show the framework of the framework of the Jatra uh, academic framework. Okay? When and the objective of the Jatra academic framework in a way is to get to that uh, humanizing education. It is it involves every makhluk that we have in the uh, in the university okay the staff the academic staff the administrative staff okay, without them uh, yeah, if you are the head of the department you know lah if you don't have your pa you will not you will not be able to work lah. okay so the administrative staff are very 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 important because uh, in fact if you don't have the administrative staff you will not have the student because they are the one that that process uh, that process admission okay uh, we have the importance of the student, the importance of all the staff, daya okay? bersih. Uh, and we, when we talk about the project, uh, the flagship project, we have project about cat. We have a lot of cats in the in the university, so they are also a part of the humanizing humanizing process. UNGS one two zero one have project about birds, and in Kuantan they have a project that's trying to preserve uh, Sumatra rhino. Okay, so we are talking about all everyone. We are talking about everyone in the university when we talk about uh, when we talk about humanization. It involves everyone. And if let's say one of the okay, one of the unit does not work, then we are going to get into we are going to get into problems. Okay? If let's say the admission unit does not work, the administrative staff does not work, then we will not have we will not have students. If the if the academic staff do not teach, then the student will not have a teachers. Okay. If the student don't come to class, then we, then the teacher will going to be talking to the, going to be talking to the chess. Okay, so we are talking about, we are talking about the involvement of, the involvement of everyone and everyone in the university are, in the university are important. Okay, without one of them, then we are going to be, uh, we are, there will be some, uh, some disability. Okay, uh, in fact, uh, one of the new task force is a task force on disability and inclusiveness. Uh, so, siapa yang akan di di volunteer kan tu tak tahu lah. <laughs> there, there, there are some of the staff that are in the in the unif uh, in the in the kuliah that uh, we that we identify uh, to to be to be one of the member in the uh, inclusivity and disability uh, disability task force. Okay. So, uh, I, I just want to add uh, uh, when we talk about uh, what is uh, what is humanization. Uh, what is humanizing uh, humanizing education and why is it that we have this humanizing education people have been asking the university since 1983 i think uh, they, they, uh, they, they say that uh, from the start the, the universities are trying to ha humanizing education but we do not use the word humanizing education we talk about uh, we talk about islamizations and and and, and uh, brother jahid talk about uh, the the relationship between humanizing uh, and islamization we 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 can see okay there are uh, there are a lot of similarity and if when we islamize education we will humanize we will humanize education okay but when we humanize ed education we may not we may not Islamize education. <laughs> okay, so they, 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 they are something that uh, when we look at humanizing that, that may not satisfy the, uh, that may not satisfy Islamization. Okay, but, but, uh, uh, but they, they are a lot of, uh, they are a lot of things that are, uh, that are similar. Okay, what we have done previously, okay, when, when we talk about Islamization, uh, in the 80s and uh, and in the 90s, when we talk about humanization in the 80s and 90s, okay. In fact, where uh, in uh, in his book, Professor Dr. Abu Hamid Abu Slaman is talk. Uh, you have him uh, talk about humanizing nature of you humanizing nature of Islamizations, okay. So why is it that we come up with this uh, humani humanizing education? Uh, the, the thing is that a lot of the thing that that we have in the past okay, you have a lot of thing that that are already lost uh, the, the thing that we have in the past 
Okay, previously when we look at Kuliah of IRK, is Islamic Rivi Knowledge and Human Sciences, every student are required to have a minor. Okay, but as time moves, that, that change. Okay, previously, if you are talking about Arabic, you have a certain level of Arabic where the student have to, where have to take. Okay, but as time passed by, and because of the requirement of uh, ministry lah requirement it itu requirement inilah you have those thing uh, those thing become missing okay we we tend to follow what the ministry say even though in our heart it is uh, it is not right okay why i say it is not right one of the thing that the ministry uh, asked us to do last uh, just a few years ago okay, when I think I was already at Ahmad, is, is to change the UNGS courses. Students have to take, uh, students have to, uh, to take, apa nama ni? What, what do they call apa nama ni? Yang Datuk Amidu Najjar? The... The, the, yang, yang, yang bahasa Melayu tu. Oh, the MPU. Ah, the, the MPU courses. We, we change the UNGS to MPU, even though at that time, okay, we, we, we really, really disagree with uh, we've changed UNGS to uh, UNGS to to MPU, uh, but th but then uh, we come back to UNGS. We 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 do in a way we 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 still have we already have some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, MPU content uh, in, in the in the UNGS, okay? But 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 we change, and then we talk about all these research universities. And because of all the research universities, sometimes we have the weird KPI had that having need, the, the need to have 17 publications or something. So because of that, we have all this. Uh, we, in a way, we, we lost uh, the, the humanizing, the Islamizing uh, curriculums that we have, uh, that we have previously. Okay? So I think that is one of the reasons that, uh, that the university is coming up with trying to go back to the uh, what we have previously so that's why if you have read the uh, sejahtera academic framework book uh, the the buku tadi ha okay the sejahtera academic framework book humanizing education for rahmatan lil alamin post covid 19 disruption so it say that uh, it is it is not new Okay, some of it are not new, okay, but some of it are uh, some of it are new. Okay, we are trying to, okay, we are trying to okay, improve our universities, and in trying to improve our university, we may have uh, to go back to. Uh, we have to go back to some of the elements that we have uh, uh, that we have uh, previously. Okay, so we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of issues. Okay, that that that, that change the our trajectory. You know, that that change the university traject that change the university trajectory. Uh, now she can show the gamba. Uh, next, okay. So these are some of the things that that have changed university trajectory at least uh, at least recently, uh, because of the. Uh, because of the obsessiveness uh, with, with ranking, so that's why our current rector okay, are, are really, really, really against ranking. Okay, in fact, uh, a few days ago, uh, I think if not QS, it's time higher education ranking, sent an email to us saying that, so these are the data that we are going to publish for, uh, for next year. Okay, these are the data that we are going to use to rank uh, I, I, uh, I, IUM. Okay, uh, not, not to say that all the ranking is negative. They, they are positive thing about the about the ranking. The the, the thing is that it has been uh, it has been manipulated. Okay, or one of the thing if, if we uh, read recently, okay, the, the the article on predatory publishing in Scopus uh, evidence on cross country differences. I think uh, the the top countries uh, in the world are okay, one of the top countries in the world are Malaysia. Okay, in terms of publications in predatory publishing, okay, the, the 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 problem is that it is the ministry who pay the lecturers to pay the predatory publisher. Okay, so that uh, so that the university is going to be in the uh, going to be in the uh, in the ranking. Okay, we we know certain university that, that 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 pay a lot of money in order in order for the university to be uh, to be uh, to be ranked. 
higher okay to be better in term of in term of ranking okay, but does not mean uh, uh, better uh, does not mean better academically or better uh, in term of uh, in term of research okay so so we have this push from we have this push from the uh, from the higher up so you have that the picture of Leviathan over there, uh, the the big governments uh, uh, that, that pushing the university into uh, one direction, while while we want to go into a while we want to go into a different direction. So sometimes it is not easy. Okay, uh, when okay, in fact when when we have a meeting uh, in the ministry, as, as when I was in Ahmad, usually when we have a meeting, uh, ni ni UAE memang tak dengar cakap mana. <laughs> <laughs> buat buat kerja sendiri je. So then, then we we just sit there okay lah whatever lah whatever you want to say. <laughs> okay? Uh they they talk about they they want uh stu student to graduate talking about graduate employability but we know at some university in Malaysia in order to improve their graduate graduate employability they do training because one of the definition if employed if you are training then you are employed. So that university that's doing that, they have a very very high employability. Okay, but our university are not doing that. Uh, so th this uh, th these are the challenges. Okay, that uh, that make it hard for us to for us to change for for us to move. Okay, so we want to move, but then you have people that are trying to uh, they are trying to uh, to pull us. Okay, letak the uh, letak the brake. Okay, so. Ah, okay. Rector also talk about uh, uh, the human capital, apa nama ni, model of uh, model of education. Okay, instead of the university is trying to uh, to educate a human, okay, trying to make a human a human, okay, trying to educate human to become a human. Okay, because of all these pushes, okay, universities become a factories that is. Uh, producing human human capital okay so uh, you, yeah uh, they they are they are good thing uh, when you are, when you talk about human capitals okay uh, to increase human capital is is good okay but then when you when when you use human capital when 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 you treat human as a commodity then uh when the ministry treat human as commodity, when then when the ministry treat student as a commodity, and then and then it's going to apa namila sit through to the uh, to the university. Okay, so that's why we need to. Uh, that's why there is a need for us to to, to relook at our our curriculum. Okay, make sure that we are producing. Uh, make sure not not we are producing. Make sure that we are nurturing humans. Yes. Okay, make sure that we are. And make sure that we are nurturing human. That's why, and uh, that's why we have the need for uh, the need for human uh, the need for humanizations uh, of uh, of educations. Okay, so you have that issue at the uh, at the macro uh, macro level. Okay, but because of that, the the objective of the macro level, the objective of the politician and all those things, okay, that then it affect the it affect the university. So now we have to. Uh, we have to fight back, lah. Okay, so that's why we have this. Okay, the the, the thing is that uh, okay, uh, for us to for us to change, okay, people, uh, everyone talk about the class size is uh, the class size is big, okay, but then the 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 ministry want the the class size to be big, okay. They say that you you need to have an op optimum number of students in the in the class so that. Uh, the return to investment is uh, is optimum. The return to investment is high, because the study that have been done uh, for Malaysia, the return to investment for education is very very uh, is very low. Okay? But then we uh, we also need to look at the study lah. What what does it mean by return to? What does it mean by return to investment? Okay, we have all this weird KPI. Okay, people talking about uh, moving goalposts of of promotions. Uh, I just put the MSD so you can see lah. Whatever you want, whatever come to your mind. Okay, if if you, if you see MSD, okay, we have problem with finance. 
uh, budget is not enough and everything okay, in trying to uh, in trying to humanize the uh, our our delivery in trying to humanize our curriculum okay, and at the lecturer's level okay, when we graduated uh, from uh, from university okay when we get our phd uh, when, uh, no, no, let me let just say i lah when i graduated from uh, when i get my phd i don't even know what is the meaning of pedagogy Okay. So then, uh, luckily for those who start joining the university, I think in early 2000 or end of 19, uh, 1990s or something like that, every lecturers are required to take BTMC. So at least when you come in, you uh, you are. Uh, you are taught lah what is uh, what is teaching. What what do you need in order for you to have an. Uh, uh, eh, uh, for you, how do you interact with your students? Okay, but when I joined, because I joined in 1997, I don't think I have to attend BTMC because at that time it's not required yet. Okay, but for those who come after me, they are uh, they are required to attend BTMC. Yeah, and, and the thing is that uh, when, when I join CPD, <laughs> I have to come up with all those training. <laughs> okay, even though initially I don't even know uh, what is uh, what is pedagogy. Okay, so we have we have all these uh, we have all these issues. Okay, in in us trying to in us trying to humanize uh, education. Okay, but I'm assuming here that everyone uh, know what is humanizing education. Okay, but but what what really is humanizing? Uh, what really is humanizing education? Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, because what what we have over here is uh, a pandemic, just one way forum. So. You, we don't have, we don't need people to apa nama ni lah, angkat tangan and uh, and answer the question. So, okay, what really is humanizing education and what really is humanizing education from uh, from IUM perspective? Because if you ask people from uh, from the West, uh, their answers may be, their answers may be uh, going to be different, not may be different, it's going to be different. Okay, so what is humanizing education is from uh, uh, from IIUM perspective, so that's why we come up with the, that's why we come up with, with the Sejahtera Academic Framework, and the Sejahtera Academic Framework is the book that uh, that's trying that's try to explain okay, what do we mean by uh, by humanizing education, okay? And if we look at this framework, we have a lot of the thing that we have previously, okay? But Instead of putting triple ICE over there, okay, what we put is seven mission statement. Okay, why is it that we put seven mission statement? Okay. To put that seven mission statement there instead of triple ICE, we have a discussion with Prof. Uh, Prof. Kamal already. Okay, uh, and when we have a discussion, Prof. Kamal say that uh, that that people know the the word. Uh, the integration, Islamization, internationalization, and comprehensive excellence. But that is just a summary of that seven mission statement. But people don't know what's the seven mission, what's the seven mission statement. So that's why we put the seven mission statement instead of the uh, triple, instead of triple ICE. Okay, instead, instead of the summary, okay, we want all the community in the university to go back and look at what are the uh, what are the seven uh, what are the seven mission statement and the seven mission statement uh, are in the uh, are in the south uh, are in the south book okay i think let let me just stop uh, over here first then uh, we can continue uh, later on the uh, 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 on this uh, uh, humanizing okay uh, later on in, in this uh, second session okay thank you 20 minutes. So, thank you very much, our honorable dean, to deliver very informative uh, information and speak. So, now we have some time for uh, question and answer session. But we put that in uh, briefing. Can I ask now? <laughs> Just say what you want to say first. I'll okay, say what I want to say. <laughs> Thanks, my boss. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I do remember there was one time uh, 
the ministry, the government of Malaysia, in the Ministry of Education talks about the terms we call it memanusia kan manusia. It was there have been coins in 1980s. And the way I look at humanizing education, I keep on pondering at it now and I keep on reading the books and I try to face that are we now as educator have not reached to a level of humanizing our education with our pedagogy, with our andragogy, with our teaching plan, with our prospect, which is related to the student level, to the student class. There are students who are not a bit better, not a bit okay, we try to manage to their level. And the students who are much better, who will see that there's a possibility to get a lot of A, that's way how we teach. Is it not humanizing and understanding the student? Is it not the way that we're doing now? We have been doing that all the way. This why I try to understand why is the problem with what we are having now. Humanizing amplify in the manner of which I see, should I manifest my humanizing? Should I show my concern? Should I show my softness to my student? How are you, my student? Are you okay? How are you, uh, the Ummah, the next generation? We say in that manner. And should I show with my own commitment, being an educator? Uh, that's a question which I keep on trying to understand. Why do they have Because being an educator, I do understand and I can agree. I might, most of you might agree. Before you start your teaching plan, we will start to think, how can I make my student understand? Whether you agree or not, that is the first question. How are I going to start my class today? Is it not humanizing? I'm not thinking of my student. And the big question is that, how do you see your student? That's the third question. Do you see your student as your customers or the future generation? If we can understand these terms, inshallah, we know that if they are the student who will be leading the society in the future, the way we manage that is really a humanizing. If we see that the student, they are always right, nothing is wrong with them. We are the one who explore. Thank you very much. And that's my idea, which I keep on pondering. Assalamualaikum. So thank you, Dr. Dolazi. So your question to specific or any speaker or in general? It's open. So can I invite to Dr. Hamilton to give this answer for this question? Thank you, thank you, Dr. Dolazi. Very good. Okay. Can I have a question? I think those who are in IUM since the 90s, if you check back, and even now, you check back the document that you signed. I'm sorry, I have to be blunt now. Do we, uh, each of us, check back the document that we have signed to be a lecturer here? Yeah, yeah. In the 19, uh, in, in 1990, it was very important because Prof. Kama at that time brought us to the fact that in that document, that you are in situ parents, number one, and being in situ parents, that we are Morabis. We are not just lecturers and so on. We are Murabis. So when we look into the Islamic, I mentioned just now, when we are Murabi, we are concerned with ta'lim giving the knowledge. We are concerned with uh, ta'dib giving the adab. We are concerned with giving them ta'zib, making it ta'zib, purify them, their soul and so on. And the last thing is that we are qudwa asana. We are the good example. Okay? So even if you go into the sejahtera context in terms of humanizing right we have been doing it but maybe at that time kita, kita pakai baju ustaz okay so kita pakai baju i, will, I don't want to say islamization Ayah. because islamization is something you do daily because islamization as mentioned by our mashayikh of islamization is to see things from the islamic viewpoint right how to make it from a, so if it is not sharia compliant then we have to throw it out Okay, so that is the process of Islamization from the concept to the implementation to the mechanism that is being used and to the result that is ha that, that, that will happen. Of course, the, the overall result in the end will be up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He will dictate the result, not us. We can only have the effort. So I would say we are doing that humanizing as well, comparatively. We are the universities, we are more into the spiritual part. And uh, I think with this new, more complete in the sense that when I see, when I look at what the Zul is bringing now, in terms of the concept is one thing, and Prof. Kamal has shown that this concept is not against Islamic in the book that he mentioned about 
uh, that the uh, Jaffra means Fala. And then it has the mechanism, and we have that only in the uh, Jaffra academic framework. Then now is the time of implementation. So we will have keep on carrying our task of doing what I mentioned just now uh, as, as uh, embedded in our document that have been signed. It's just that we have to tighten up the screws where we lack. Last time we not give, they didn't give importance to consultation meeting with the student because we are busy in getting the research to be done, the papers to be republished and so on, but now we have to do give some time. And especially now during the pandemic, we don't see them. It is more of a challenge to keep them in class and to ask them. But some, this has to be done. So perhaps we have to go one above the call of duty. Perhaps we have to give, even in our teaching, that daily concept of uh, sacrificing something that we, we value, that is our time, for the sake of sadaqah the waqaf of time, the sadaqah of time to be with our students because these students when they graduated and they learn from us an akhlaq a spiritual akhlaq for example truthfulness sadaqah, sidr, not sadaqah, sidr a truthfulness and sadaqah is called sadaqah because that puts truth to your iman that you are willing to sacrifice your mal, your something that you are you value for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you have this uh, input into the student, the behavior, the spiritual behavior, the spiritual ethic of sidq, uh, truth being truthful to, to himself or to others, and it comes out into a, a what do you call it, into a behavior that people recognize this person does not lie. What he says with his mouth is what he has inside. Okay, and then you know you got you got uh, you got the pahala, you got you got the reward of sadaqa because of that. And when he teaches somebody else, your student, this this goodness, he will get the pahala, and you will share the same pahala that is getting. It's like this the uh, pyramid system, right? So you got all these things. So that, that's why I'm saying that uh, Dr. Hadi, you are correct. Alhamdulillah for reminding. We keep doing on, but now we can see. Uh, a wider or a bigger way, a more transdisciplinary way of achieving this thing. Thank you. That's my my my, my uh, input on that. So I think uh, Prof. Shahami, you are waiting for uh, some question and many time messages. Hi. Thank you. Thank you, Dato. Please, uh, who is first, Dr. Shohami, Prof. Shohami or Dr. Ridwan? Dr. Shohami, I see just now. After that, Dr. Ridwan. Oh, it is another before that. <laughs> I see three fellows, Dr. Ridwan, Dr. Shohami. Prof. Shohami, please. Okay, Dr. Ridwan, I think Prof. Shohami is something really... So, uh, this is not really a, a question, this is just an observation. Um, I sense a lot of frustration amongst a lot of lecturers. Um, just for your information, this is a universal debate. Uh, I'm following the news of uh, what's going on in France in the French education system. And the debates in France are exactly the same debates as we're having in Malaysia. What is the future of education? How are we going to develop human individuals in a world of AI? It, it is really a universal problem and everybody around the world is trying to figure it out. Whether it is in Europe, whether it's in the United States, whether it is in Australia, it's just people are trying to do it according to their own value system. Um, so don't feel frustrated, but, but just realize that this is the challenge of the 21st century. We, we are going into a new era where the technology is changing so quickly. We actually, we should be updating our syllabus every semester, which of course is not possible. So we're always trying to play catch up. Um, so I, I think just be patient and kind of go with the flow. And I think just, you know, 
but don't be frustrated with what's going on. It's, it's a universal problem. Okay, this question, I'm going to Dr. Nick. As you are the expert of the, from the education, can you give this answer? Dr. Nick, yeah. one question. Thank you, uh, Prof. Ahsan Mahak. Actually, I'm here, I'm learning a lot from all of you regarding to this topic, the crucial topics. Uh, coming back to the, the question, we focus more on debating rather than we are building our students. Actually, uh, when we compare what has been practice of education from uh, Islamic education or uh, secular Western education, when we go through the definition and goal of education in Islam and the Western, uh, very considerable. Uh, there are the first of this difference is the is the definition, the epistemology. One, uh, as we know, Muslims main sources of education are the Quran and Sunnah, uh, the lifestyle of the Prophet Muhammad, and these are urban in nature. Uh, as such, they are uh, considered by Muslims to be devoid of errors and deficiencies. And consequently, uh, the Islamic concept of education is an integrated and holistic uh, that cater all aspects of humanity in a balanced way. Uh, specifically, uh, men's physical, spiritual, intellectual, and emotional faculties. So no prejudice is given to anyone or to any element at the extent of another thing this would lead to imbalance and this disharmony. In contrast, Western education tends to emphasize the faculty of reason, akal. Yes, over the uh, debate and then such as the spiritual dimensions. The result is more physical or materialistic approach to education, which has result in separation between uh, religion and life. This one we know. This does not mean that Muslims are close to the idea and opinions of Western education theories or, uh, or civilizations. And also, uh, the second important difference between Islam and West is the purpose of education. Uh, Prof. al Atas uh, claims that the goal of Western education is to produce individuals who will be a good citizen. While in Islam, Islam seeks to produce people who will be a good man. For example, a balanced individual in all aspects, psychological, social, spiritual, intellectual, and physical, regardless of his color, race, or country. Uh, moreover, the overall goal of education in Islam is to achieve al-ubudiyah. Al-ubudiyah to, to al-ubudiyah to lillah. Uh, serving to Allah, the Almighty. Uh, this is evident in the words of Allah. وَمَا قَلَتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have only created jinns and men that may Sir. Thus, Muslims consider the primary goal of human existence to worship Allah as his vice queen, as Khalifa. Having said this, uh, worshipping to Allah, the Almighty, is not limited to the performing to the form of religious ritual, such as prayer, fasting, sadaqah, haji, but instead it uh, encompasses all that is uh, listen to Allah. Uh, uh, example for right words and acts and talk. Al Afal al Sahiha wal Afwal al Sahiha wal Afkar al Sahiha. So, uh, instilling a deep level of worship in the true sense of real purpose of inquiring knowledge and education in Islam. So, in the contrast to this, 
Western education or secular education posits uh, several assumptions that they are contrary to the Islamic of the world and the main origins. Uh, so maybe I would like to share or to recall the why uh, Western education are obsessed. Uh, like uh, the effect. Uh, as soon as a child become a year one, uh, year old, we started buying toys for him or is still to love to, to object or cartoon to him. And then the mother begins teach him or her baby that uh, teaching uh, letters A for apple, B for ball. But uh, we let we doesn't teach uh, baby that A is for Allah, for example, and B for Bismillah, and continuously. At this age of two or three, we What's take him to the day. Uh, where is Western education? So, this is chronology. At the age of three, he or she is in nursery. Children ordinarily do not go to school because they are used not to because they are not to use it, not to use it. They prefer to accompany at mom at, with their ibu at home. That's why they they all cry when going to school. And then from this part, the the child begins to observe every day. My my mommy, my, my mom prepares me for school under the sun or under the rain. And, uh, and I have to wear a uni uniform for school. With time, the kid began to love school because it looked to him like the utmost reason of existence. When he to school from the early beginning. And at the age of Five, we call it. He is a primary one. Seven. Every day the parent wake him up for school, but not for Fajr Fajr. He is quickly back on school, by school, but not during weekend. During weekend, they sleep and keep in Also, every day his assignment are checked by his parents, but uh, not one of no one but no one bothers about his Islamian assignments like prayer and also um, his school fees are paid on time but no one cares about his Islamian views by that uh, we also the what the what the long term effect on this on the long run the child begin to think, to think, to think why, to read why about life and worldly things, but hardly thinks about the hereafter. Hereafter, he doesn't cry when going to school anymore because he's used to stay away from home. Because of this, he want to avoid school, or he want to admission into the university that far away from home, especially. Our Muslim girls, I am not sure. It might, it might be. They don't want to be under Ibu control anymore. They want to become their own boss. They want to become boss, bossy. When a teenager gets an admission into uh, any institution, he goes crazy and celebrating. They must freedom. But when he or she is given an admission into Halakov, that is a girl, he doesn't even wear a smile and his sister. No smiling. Uh, then, what we can, uh, that's why you see when undergrad finally graduate from the university after the final exam, they go crazy. Staining t shirt with markers, dancing, jumping. Parting, 
if they have won, uh, if, if they have won a ticket to Jannah, but you won't blame them. That because Western education has been made to look to uh, trophy to, the, to them. Um, my dear brothers and sisters, because education uh, has made has been made to look like a competition, you can see uh, why the lack of religion and uh, religion has been made to like an option. We don't put a religion as the, or Islamic education as the number one. Uh, I think that's all from me. I leave it to others to Prof. Prof. Dean to complete. Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, answer. So now, uh, Prof. Shohani, now you are ready to uh, the question and please specific to the your question is our uh, which is the speaker we are addressing among the four speakers. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, uh, Prof. Sanol. And thank you all to the panelists. I would like to ask the student leaders uh, because you no, know, I receive uh, a lot of uh, complaints from my students. Why lecturers give a lot of assignments? Why lecturers, you know, require us to read? Why lecturers require us to do this, do that? Why we must do 15 credit hours? Why, when, why when this and that? Uh, can we just go shortcut? Well, we just need employment. We just need to be free. We don't want gates. We don't want this. We don't want that. So is it is it so? Uh, our brother leader here. This is what I got from my student. You know, in the student feedback survey, this is what they say. You know, you you are so you know, traditional. You give a lot of assignments. You are bad lecturers. You 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 don't understand what we need. We want now money, freedom, employment, entertainment. But you give us all the hardship. Allah Allah. What do you think, Mr. President? Answers. <laughs> I'll try to answer the question. Um, so from Dr. Suhaimi, okay. So yeah, even we as a student leader, we always receive complaint about assignments, complaint about uh, assessment in class or something, complaint about uh, how the lectures, uh, how uh, the method. Um, but the most important part as our student leaders, we need to tapis, we need to do, we need to see which comment we need to uh, raise concern to the kuliah level, okay, or somehow there are students just, apa yang kita panggil, manja ke, manja, yeah, um, uh, I do believe, I, I do realize that there are some students, they just want shortcut. They just want to complain uh, and so on um, because I think this this um, um, have uh, the idea of education itself. They don't get the idea of education. They think uh, they want to have uh, the uh, education just for the sake of to have a job in the future to have um, to be as uh, to be fit in the demand in the industry okay so based on our discussion today uh, i think the importance of us to focus on humanizing education is to for us for us maybe the lecturers and also the student to see uh, the education is not only about getting certificates uh, and to be academic excellence there are a lot of uh, aspect that we need to cater also Okay, and for me personally, I think um, uh, personally, I think we we didn't uh, we don't agree with students that complaining about a lot of assignment, just giving a uh, bad uh, comments without any argumentative reasons. Okay, um, for me as as a student itself, uh, we know. Uh, the path of learning something, the path as the path as a learner, it's it normally is a difficult lah. Okay, we need to sacrifice our time. 
we need to have a lot of effort to understand the subject okay um, and I think in this part uh, somehow <coughs> we need uh, the help from the lecturers to give us understanding how it is important for us to do this assignment uh, how um, how is very important for us to read all this article because some sometimes for uh, for some of the students they just think that they want to do the assignment they want they don't want to relate back this assignment this task with their their life so i think if uh, we relate back uh, when we talk about humanizing education we need to do we need to be in the education system we need to learn with our soul so it's very difficult uh, to our students who come to the class without their soul their soul is to have the entertainment to have fun uh, to be relaxed to watch netflix and so on okay so it's a difficult way it's a difficult journey to to change the mindset of the, the, the society the people but we need to start from now i think I think this uh, not only for university, but we need to start from maybe a lower uh, education schools, schools, kindergarten and so on. It's a long process lah. And when we talk about education system, okay, um, um, we need, <coughs> like I read some in the comments, yeah, we need a specific guideline because we, when we talk about system, maybe uh, some of the lecturers have done uh, very, very done, uh, very good to teach their students to have to to be to have their soul in the subject. Okay, they are already implementing humanizing education, and also there are students they are very passionate in their study studies. And I say I think they involve their souls in the in what they are learning. But when we talk about uh, system we need to see or all of us the students the lecturers and other related parties we need to see how we want to implement this idea so uh, to sum summarize my question to the uh, to 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 the, to, the, uh, to the question just now um, we need the help from the lecturers for us to understand what is the importance of, for us to reading all these reading materials uh, what importance for us to do this assignment, to do this group discussion, and so on? Because sometimes uh, I think there are students they don't they don't see what is the purpose of they are learning these subjects, for example, so something like that. So I think if lecturers can try uh, to give the idea on what the purpose of learning these things and to show the value by by learning this topic, inshallah. Uh, we as students, we can see, we can see uh, from the perspective as a khalifah lah to see what we can do to contribute to the society. So that is my answer. I hope uh, I'm answering the question. Oh, itu a safe answer. <laughs> not, not really, you know. Actually, student felt because you are right, you no? They wanted shortcut, eh? They because they say they came with the study loan, eighty percent. <laughs> And then they want to pay. That's the real, isn't it? Yeah? That's the real thing. And then if you know, you, you even you explain to them, this assignment will prepare you with the soft skill. You know, when you do field work, you have to talk to people. But when they face the challenge, they say this assignment is bad because now they have hurdles. And then and then you know, uh, they have to solve the problem. And then. Uh, muted, muted, Professor Amy. <laughs> they, they came to the lecturer and they asked, uh, Sir, why why you created this uh, group assignment? In reality, I can live alone without groups. <laughs> <laughs> so because my body already, already now, we, we used to live alone. Now, why are you asked to do group work? Because this group coming from different countries, different backgrounds, like at the end we quarrel, and then I'm at the end, we cannot do the work. So your purpose is defeated. And now we need to get Simon, we want A for this for this course. <laughs> so how? Can I have a question?
Can I have? I can't hear you. Can I have a question? Very noisy, very noisy. At the conference room, it's very noisy. I think uh, now it's okay, right? So I think we can ask the question to our uh, respective uh, speaker. No problem. Still have time. Can. can I have a question now? Yes, yes, you can ask the question. Okay, okay. So but you can to you can testify this question to who? You can testify the speaker. Okay, okay, that's right. Okay, thank you very much for giving me the chance to raise the question. Actually, the question is something, it is not new, and I'm sure that uh, it is uh, crossing everybody's mind, you know, as a first batch of uh, IRT, you know. I remember when the, the, the whole idea the, behind the establishment, of, uh, shall I say, the, uh, dri the, the driving force behind the establishment of the Kulia of IRT uh, was the uh, the, the, the notion of Islamization of knowledge. So even though the idea at the beginning, it was quite, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the process was quite bumpy, there was so much uh, debate about, there was opposition, so the accusation. So anyway, that process somehow went through successfully, we have reached to a stage of somehow maturity, but now we have a different, uh, I'm not sure whether it's a rebranding of the process or it is something uh, an addition to that process, that's why. So now the question is, uh, is the Islam, the concept of Islamization of knowledge and also the human, uh, humanization of education the same or they are two different things? If uh, they are two different things, what are the difference? If it's the same, what are the similarity? If they, what is the, the, the extent of that similarity between the two processes? If there are hundred person similar, why shall we coming with a different uh, concept, why you are creating another uh, area, another reason for a debate in order to, you know, to, to, to maturize this concept, it will also take some time. So in my point of view, it would have been much better to, to just proceed with the previous process and just carry on with uh, our struggle in order to, you know, achieve the, 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 the set uh, goals and mission of the Islamization. So this one question. So uh, this is uh, so this was my question. So now coming to another thing, I would like to highlight this proof. Uh, so I mean, you know, sometimes uh, uh, try to give us food uh, not only for thought, even sometimes food for stomach also. Previous last time he gave. So now I want to give him some uh, kind of food for thought. You know, with regard to the student, you are not the only one who are uh, facing the problem. You know, we have some student. You know, sometimes you no, know, I I come up with the concept, the theory of you know. I see we have a four masab. So we have to follow, I mean, whichever we like. So then uh, now currently, so the current trend is that, so there is another new masab, uh, which you all, you know, stick to. The, so that is the masab sukahati. So masab sukahati mean, so this temporization is another concept. I'm adding this, my contribution to the process. You know, uh, this is Bahasa Malayo. So we temporize, you know, mix it with some, so to make some sense. You know, I told them, so they would surprise. What is that, sir? I say, my subsukahati is that it means we have some desire, some way, and some wishes. Sometimes those wishes, those desire may not be in line with the Islamic principles, so we have to abide them. But if you are following the subsukahati, because those are the things which we like the most, we want to establish, we want to materialize. But according to Sharia, we cannot fulfill them because it go against the the spirit of Islam against the principle of Islam, therefore we cannot follow. So that's why, so I think you have to tell them the same so that then they were uh, they agree. So it, it, it has also somehow been effective, you know, and uh, you know, they become somehow attentive, you know, if we explain to them. So thank you very much for taking uh, much of your time, Prof. Uh, so now I pass it back to you. Okay, shukran, jazakallah khairan. I have finished now. I my question is finished. It seems that you can't hear me or what? No, 
voice from the conference room. <laughs> you cannot hear. Yeah. Doctor Gary speaking. No, no, yeah, your voice not heard, Doctor Gary or anyone else in the conference room from noisy nose muted. <laughs> Maybe Dr. Hayatullah's question is uh, too amazing, I think. I tak boleh dengar. Ya, ni boleh dengar tak? Can you hear? Can you hear now? Okay. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Prof Saimi dia saja je nak kacau orang tu. And he already know what should be done. Okay, but... Uh, I, I try to address uh, Prof. Raimi first lah because uh, we have a lot of that okay, not uh, that question not just in the kuliah but also at the uh, at the university level with regard to uh, workload and everything okay, it, and one is we can look from the technical answers lah technical answer of M if you look at MQA we have the student learning time and everything so uh, what we, we do need to be fair to the student with regard to the uh, with regard to the workload uh, we do not we cannot have assignment that is due at 2 in the morning or or at 12 o'clock in the morning so that that is common sense uh, so in the in your course outline so this is the technical answer one is te technical answer first in the course outline we already have that student learning time how much student should learn from our from our perspective okay so if we and you have to see how, how long does the student uh, time the student need to take in order to <laughs> uh, in order to uh, to complete the assignment lah uh, uh, last semester we have we have the issue where during this online thing uh, all assignment due on the 14th week <laughs> so uh, in a way it is not fair to the students okay but from uh, from the lecturers perspective the lecturers don't even know that the other lecturers also give the due date on that day <laughs> so we do have some kulia uh, apa nama ni lah they, they coordinate the the due date I, I know kuliah of engineering coordinate the due date for for certain courses okay so that students are not uh, are not overwhelmed okay so so that can be uh, that can be one way to uh, to tackle the uh, to tackle the issues okay because um, uh, for, for some kuliah they, they always have coordination among the lecturers if we look at CAET I know they have coordination among the lecturers when is the due date of different of different assignments so that uh, the due date uh, is not on the is not on the same day okay for sure I also complain to the student I already I give you the assignment in the first week of the semester and it is due on the 14th week why is it that on the 14th week that you do the uh, that you do your assignment okay so so that where where do we find the uh, where do where where do we find the balance lah where is the okay uh, well how how do we uh, how do we be fair so I don't know I think most lecturers uh, will be able to okay, knowing this issue most lecturers will be able to uh, to figure out how how to do it okay and then we have the question of uh, from uh, Dr. Hayatullah with regard to Islamization and human and humanization ed of education and, and everything okay uh, before uh, we come up with this humanization of education uh, what we have done uh, we, we, one is we have a task force that look at what are the current issues that the university have. Okay. We have focus group discussion on what are the issue of UNGS. Okay. Rector question us. Uh, we have a lot of students trying to commit suicide in the mahalla. So how effective are your UNGS? You are talking about this university talking about Islamizations. 
okay, what type of Islamization uh, are we talking about when we have not just one, not just two students who are intent who intend to commit suicide, okay, uh, who have all this, uh, who have all these different uh, different issues. We talk to the Murabi group because uh, we have the Murabi group among the lecturers in the university. The Murabi group raise a lot of different issues. Okay, that is happening in the that is happening in the universities. So there are issues that that I think we, we don't want to talk about uh, in in this forum. That that we think there is a need to have uh, a different tagline. There is a need to have a uh, there is a need to have a different directions. Okay, whether there is a difference between Islamization and humanization that we are talking about currently, there are differences. Okay, when, when we talk to the communities that is around the university, people in Kampung Sungai Pusu, uh, basically the, uh, the Ketua Kampung says, this is, I think this is the first time the university come and talk to us since, the, uh, since they come in in 1990, 1997, 1996, 1997. Okay, so there are, there are loopholes, there are, there are gaps that, that we need to fill. Okay, we talk about uh, transdisciplinary uh, studies that have that is not really emphasized by the university previously. Okay, so that's why currently we have uh, we we come up with programs that uh, that have that are transdisciplinary where we have. Uh, Lecturers from not just different department and different kulia at the Sejahtera Center. We coming up with uh, coming up with their program, uh, where where the program we have a, a cooperation from different from different lecturers. Of course, previously uh, we 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 tried to do something like that. In heart, supposed to do something like that, but okay, in the end, it does not happen. Okay, in the end, uh, sometimes. Uh, Okay. You, you do have cases where you are talking about in-heart since I'm already talking about in-heart. Okay. Instead of having lecturers, uh, you have some type of cooperation be between different kuliah. Now, they are the, they are the lecturer of in-heart. Okay. Instead of being assigned, but, but they are also in, uh, in, different, uh, in different kuliah. Okay, so there are issues that, there are gaps that have to be, uh, that have to be filled up. Okay. Yes, we have done a lot of community service, we have sensor, we have a lot of different things. Okay, but then when we look at presentation from other university, I think last time we have a presentation from I think Unimet or whatever. Okay, they show how they change one island. Okay, uh, in dah tak ingat dah kat mana. I think Dr. Iliani was was in that presentations. Okay, where they help uh, the the some of the people in the highland, uh, in the island to become entrepreneur okay not just in terms of tourism but on on, on a, a lot of uh, on a lot of different things all those things are coordinated okay but when we look at our university we see that okay, some of the things are not coordinated we have one we have one island that's doing this we have one unit that's doing this we have one do it, unit there doing that okay but they are not they are not coordinated so these are some of the things uh, under this uh, Sejahtera Economic Framework, these are some of the things that we are trying, uh, the university is trying to do, trying to co coordinate all this, all these things. When we talk about mental health, we have, uh, previously we have uh, counselling services providing mental health services. We have uh, a unit at Department of Psychology also handling uh, uh, counselling services. We have a unit in uh, Kuliah Education that is handling uh, counseling services and then we have in Kulia of Medicine and we have in Trasmet doing counseling services okay but they are not talking to each other okay uh, so what CCSC are doing counseling uh, services are doing the uh, the department of uh, psychology don't know okay so one of the initiative that the university have currently is they have a mental health task force and from the mental health task force we come up with an Ihsan Council, and this Ihsan Councils are the body that's going to look, uh, going to coordinate all these different, all these different unit. And when we talk about community engagement, there is a task force that look at community engagement, okay, and trying to coordinate all these different unit, uh, so that you don't have 
10 classes go to the same village at the same time or 10 classes go to the same village for 10 weeks so that, that's why we have uh, that's why we come the university come up with all this uh, with all these different initiative okay so because when, when we talk about humanization uh, humanizing education it is not just at the lecturers level is look we are looking at the, at the curriculum level we are looking at how the lecturers teach the class we are looking at the uh, at the BR, the environment we are looking at the university is looking at the mahalla the university is looking at itd okay currently if let's say you want to change something in our academic system we have to ask itd whether the system will be and will be able to handle the change or not if the system is not able to handle the change then we are not able to we not we are not able to do what we want to do academically so there are a lot of gap that have to be uh, that have to be fixed okay so that's why i think that's why the university come up with the with the framework trying to link all this all this different uh, thing uh, together and we ha they had the university have come up with a different task force okay you have the task force for unico you have the task force for mental health you have the task force for greening the university so that's why there are people who have been uh, volunteered into this uh, into this task force hopefully they look at they look at it as volunteering to the uh, volunteering to the university in order to improve the you know in order to improve the university i know apa dr irwan asyik asyik nama dr irwan <laughs> keluar in the in the task force and uh, because i was one of the people who are involved uh, different task force uh, okay so we have to limit dr irwan we have to limit these people we have to limit these certain people because anytime we have task force the chair is going to mention the same name <laughs> Okay, uh, so itulah. <laughs> uh, the, 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 uh, so that we, we try to limit uh, uh, different uh, different people in different task force, and in fact we try to have as much people as possible in the task force so that we can have more ideas um, in order to, uh, in trying to in in trying to improve the university. We uh, we involve uh, students in trying to involve uh, in trying to improve the university so that's why today we have the we have a student over here and hopefully when we have other event we can also have views from the we have views from the student yeah, views because most of the time okay we don't even know what the student want okay sometimes what the student want is right <laughs> okay what the, sometimes what the student wrote what the student want is not right <laughs> Okay, but we have to tell them lah what is uh, what what is good and and what do you think uh, what do we think uh, the the ideas can be the ideas can be improved. Okay, so so that's the that's my comment. Uh, 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 one of the thing that I have to do is to talk about uh, what the uh, what do we have to do? Okay, what are the rules of what are the rules of administrative? What are the rules of what are the rules of lecturers in supporting this uh, sejahtera uh, sejahtera academic framework? Okay, for administrative stuff, we okay uh, that we have done a lot of audit looking at how does the okay, how administrative stuff treat students. Okay, how when how administrative staff treat international student how they treat malaysian student for sure the treatment usually the treatment between international student and and malaysian student are different so that's why we have that task force for inclusivity so how do we how how do we make this uh yeah, we have umatic week but the umatic week it's just for international students so so that's another thing that we have to that we, we have to figure out it is automatic it, it should be for all students so even from the international student perspective they are looking at international students they are not looking at all the students in the university okay so administrative staff we have a lot of issues with how um, how they treat the student uh, okay when when student come to the when student come to the office that have to be uh, that have to be improved uh, okay now, now, so this thing uh, in term of time uh, time management when when i uh, when i graduated i think it's 2006 or something okay and the first day of class uh, i look at all the doors 
class is postponed, class is cancelled, class or whatever. Okay, now, now there is a reduction lah. Uh, in term of that postpone, postponement and and cancel uh, class being cancel, yeah, and this coming from the lecturers uh, that that's canceling the class. When I was at USC fighting for 10, 10 11 years, there was only two instant my class was postponed. One is because the lecturers have a family, their family passed away, and another an, another instant is that the lecturers have a meeting at Washington DC. <laughs> so. That's the only two times that my class was postponed and I never see, I can never see, very very rare that I see on the door that say that class is postponed, class is, uh, class is cancelled. So, those are some of the things that uh, our lecturers also have to, our lecturers have also have to improve. Okay, so there are a lot of things that, that, that can be improved. Okay. And th there are a lot of things that are that are already positive. Okay, that that uh, that we are trying to humanize. Okay, uh, uh, in our teaching. Okay, so how if let's say you don't have I any idea how to humanize? There are a lot of program by CPDs talking about different ways of uh, different ways of, of teaching methods. Okay, in trying to improve your your the your your delivery. Okay. In terms of curriculum, there are a lot of things that we can uh, that we can improve in terms of humanization of knowledge in our uh, in in our classes. Because uh, okay, when when we do audit with KCA, we look at almost all of all of the course outline. Okay, we say that they are integration. Okay, the, these these things are integrated. Islamization are integrated in our class. Okay, but in the document or in the final exam question we see mana on your the islamization the integration so those are the thing that can be that can be improved that can be improved the gap that the gap that we have that we, that we can uh, that we can improve okay when we talk about uh, environment okay for sure lecturers going uh, the the director if he come is going to uh, going to point to the all the all the tiles that are uh, that are missing uh, the card uh, at the ATM machine, okay. So at Mahalla, we, we we have gaps that we can uh, that we can uh, that we can improve. So that's why we have this. Uh, that's why we have this framework. And hopefully, with this framework, with promotion of this framework, everyone is going to be able to is going to be able to work together to improve the universities. Okay, we can we come up with different uh, volunteer uh, project. We try to push. Uh, uh, lecturers, we try to push uh, students, we try to push staff uh, to, to volunteers in different projects. Uh, so some of you may not know because uh, the student that involved with Desa Sejahtera, the Kampung, the, the Stingan at the traffic light before we come in the, to the university, we have a lot of students from the Kuliah that go okay, without Kuliah knowing and helping the, uh, and helping the people in that, uh, in, in that areas. Okay, after they help, then the university come and help them to help the uh, the people over there. Okay, we have a student that are they are already very good. So uh, now we have to we have to push the student. We have to push our we have to push ourselves. Okay. Uh, oh, lastly, enough. <laughs> uh, and one of the things that we talk about uh, the initiative from Prof. Raimi. Okay, uh, uh, he come up with the book for this. Uh, uh, for this uh, bunny, for this ibadah camp. So hopefully, every everyone okay, that uh, that are attending, okay, will be able to reflect and come up with just a few pages, so that everyone in this year at least have one at least have one paper. Okay, if let's say everyone in the in the university, everyone in the kulia, okay. Uh, contribute one paper to that book, then we have everyone having one uh, one chapter in the book for uh, uh, for this year. Eh, tak banyak kan? About three pages, three to five pages. I think uh, you can write something in three to five pages in one or two hours. Eh, so thank you. So thank you very much for your answer of the question. So now, any more questions from the floor? Please, anybody? Okay, if no, uh, I have one, my own curiosity, one question to uh, Dr. Hamidun.
uh, our speaker, first speaker. My curiosity that question, uh, IIM has been uh, producing graduate for long, that is 38 years by bending their education system, Islamic value and modern education. So my question is, was the previous approach of education, uh, educating of the student inhuman or not relevant to the moral and spiritual development? That's why we are coming humanizing education or And uh, when you say blending, uh, it does not mean uh, blending like, you know, you take coffee, you take milk, and then you blend, you bring coffee only, right? But for us, it is rather, we have the Islamic worldview, right? And then we did the process of Islamization. Now, people are thinking that this is a university of Islamization. Yes, we popularize Islamization, but Islamization is that, for example, if you go to the, the in the big picture is the concepts, is the concept, is the worldview, is the whole process, the educational establishment, the process in it, and so on. But in actual life, understanding what Islamization is all about, in on practical terms, is that you want to be within the Sharia. You want to be within the boundaries in Sharia in your life. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ They are not uh, commanded except to worship Allah and to live their life according to the standards. مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ In all sincerity, living out their deen, which is their uh, life according to uh, what they call it, مَعَبُ uh, الْعَلَى مَوْدُودِ In the four terms, that deen is basically the whole life. But when it becomes deen, it becomes something that is ibadah, is when it follows the tenets and the rulings of uh, the, the sharia of Islam. So, when you have the modern things that come, Islamization, for example, you have now a lot of things, uh, like in the modern term now, you have a lot of things that comes from Korea. You know, people are going into the Korean culture now because of globalization, right? So, all the young people wants to eat something Korean. Now, when you see this in the supermarket, what's the first thing you see? The first one, you're looking for the halal logo, right? Okay. When you don't see the halal logo, you look into the uh, ingredients. And there's, there's nothing, there's nothing E400 something and so on, there is nothing uh, haram. Then you take it and you buy it because you want to eat something halal. That is Islamization of your life. In the, it's a micro picture. In the bigger picture, of course, the whole thing, even Islamization of the political system, right? What does it mean, right? So this is the, the bigger picture. So with, uh, for me, with this uh, Sajahtra thing, for now, it's humanizing, right? Yeah. It's humanizing. You're going to the qualities of the human being in the whole, the Insan Kamel that we also spoke last time, Insan Kamel. I remember Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim at that time as the Minister of Education, right? In our tarbiyah asyamilah, kita perlu membangunkan manusia sehingga dia sampai ke tahap insan kamil. So, I didn't say that. That was in 19, I don't know, 1970s or so on, 1980s. Alright? So, now, with this new concept, is is something, uh, sejahtera, like I said, just now, there's a concept. That's the implement the mechanism of implementation. That's the assessment, and it's based on the human experience about this uh, sustainability of the world. Uh, and and I take it as uh, these are the new raw materials for our spaceship engine, the NASA warp speed of Star Trek, Star Trek Enterprise, eh? Enterprise for example, right? But that raw material, sejahtera cell, cannot be put into the engine yet until it has been filtered. And become pristine with no, with no, what do you call it, uh, corruption, no, it has to be pure. So that filter is Islamization. 
Right? So we cannot get away from Islamization, whatever we put. Now I said it is just uh, looking at human being. But consider, if you, if you read uh, Ben Green, if you read uh, Michio Kaku, consider in the future when you have enhanced human being. Like I mentioned just now, just uh, a bio, bio machine. What about other thing when you become an almost a, an android, a bog? <laughs> That when when they, that yes, can can I continue? When when there is a, a, a human machine enhancement, right? Even for example, Ray Ban sunglass now have miniature camera, and you even have the holographic screen on it. So it's now people with Ray Ban they can just do this for their uh, screen scroll up, scroll down, scroll left, scroll and so on. So. You see, like I told you just now, technology and science is on an exponential curve. Y equal x3. This is not equal y equal x. So, a time will come when you have superhuman. That's why that Jewish guy talk about homo deus. Homo deus, the, the godly man, the divine man. Right? But I'm saying that we are homo paradiso. We come from paradise. Alright? So, our concept, we will still have that paradisical uh, nature but then later on when it is not only talking about humanizing education but it is more about uh, about the environment and the environment we say is not only the planetary environment perhaps we are going to talk about the whole Milky Way system perhaps we are going to talk about like I was telling just now interpret or have, give the tafsir of Ya Ma'ashar al wal Jinni both إن استطعتم أن تنفذوا من أقطار السماوات والأرض فانفذوا لا تنفذوا إلا بسلطان. All the whole of man and the whole of jinn, right? If you are able to penetrate, jump, penetrate the heavens, then do it. You will not be able unless you have that power. So I think that is what my answer to you is that we are not. Something new, but we are adding to it, uh, making it more like the, 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 our dean said, making it more, uh, tightening up the screw, you know, taking care of the difference between discipline, for example, that's why they call for transdisciplinarity. So it is part of the whole process where we will evolve to be, uh, as a system, as an institution, to become, uh, if we work hard, to become the leading the Rahmatul Lil Alamin and the leading institution to show that balance between uh, that uh, in the human being, that balance that we can get to live with our environment. And I think I understood this when when I, I registered for duty and have a two-hour uh, interview session by Sheikh Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman, you know, to talk about this thing. I can still remember that. So now it is like. You know something that has already been mentioned, but now we're going to do put it into action and doing it. And I think, like he's mentioned, uh, the doctor has mentioned about uh, there's a Morabi Task Force, and now the Morabi Task Force is is called back to to help in the Mahalla programs and this sort of thing. So now we are doing this thing together. Thank you very much. Morning, morning, So okay, thank you very much uh, for informative answer. So I'm still telling any more question from the floor, please we have time. So you can ask if you have any question. If not, then I can be concluding remarks to ending our... Can, can, uh, can I have a question? Okay. Uh, I would like to have a question for our learned brothers. You know, n number one, when we talk about Makasi Sharia, I would like to consider you to consider, is it protection preservation a minimum point sort of uh, qualification that you preserve it that's it you're you're done you're done on something for you're done the thing for islam or is it maqasid you know when you read the the western heritage of the islamic heritage uh ibn ashur and the others you find that the concept of uh, al maslaha al mulaha can become a maqsid you know a uh, 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 maslaha that is, uh, what do you call it, that is uh, urgent, yes. that is needed, that is important, can become a maqsid, an objective of the sharia. 
So now it seems that, for example, in the preservation of akal, the minimum is that you cannot lose your akal, right? So that is why it's haram to take harm is haram to take drug. But are you supposed just to uh, let your akal be at that minimum level? Uh, are you supposed to develop your akal, your knowledge? your critical ability, critical thinking ability, your reflective thinking ability, to the maximum. And somebody asked, what is the maximum, Ustaz? Allah did mention, Sanurihim ayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyana annahul haq. Allah mentioned that we will show our signs in the horizon and in themselves until yatabayyana. It's not just bayyana, it's not only tabayyana, it is yatabayyana, and you know in Arabic, whenever it's added in the structure, there's an addition in meaning. Yatabayyana, falsely being given evidence. You will be forced to look at it and see that it's an evidence. Yatabayyana, one after another, is repetitively evidence one after another until he is the truth. So looking at the human being, you are going to have that truth. That truth being processed by your synapse in the in your grey matter, uh, what they call it, the messages carried around by the neurons. But then now they, they discovered that there are forty thousand cells in the hearts, and they call them the carriers, the neurites, just to differentiate between neurons in the brain. And they say the, the neurites has no path; it is almost. Uh, what they call it, it's almost uh, infinite how they move. Neurons have the much wire wire they, they have to go through, but here in the, in the heart, it's different. So it is a type of consciousness, a type of thinking that they have still not discovered how. So they're going to do that. So the science in the horizon, the science in themselves, until it becomes clearly proven, clearly evidence that he is the truth. So this is what I'm saying. When we say that when we took Maksid Sharia, is it just the minimum or is it a range? Okay, this, there is one. About the other Maqasid, the same idea. Alright? Your mal, you know, it's not just that you don't waste it. You have to make it uh, liquid so that it run around in society and doesn't become dulatan by agnia. It doesn't become just for your rich people. Right? And then, so these are the things that we have to understood that in, in, in our Islamization, in our looking at that, uh, the new things and the new concept and so on, this is what we are going to do. So, this is the first thing. And then, uh, I will also, that is the question I would like to ask you, which is which? Do we take as a point? Do we take as, as a range? The other one, the other question that I mentioned uh, that, that I would like to ask you is that, looking at the, people are talking about AI, the future, the Ajit mentioned about the human machine interaction and so on what about in our assessment or even in our education right from the beginning we devise our curriculum such that it become elements items in a huge strategical game right one of the game for example instead of teaching macroeconomics you use that in the Malaysian deficit economy how do we get out of that right at the world level, currencies, right? Fire-based money, World War Three. Fire-based money versus gold-based money, USD versus RMB. Make it into a strategic game. The student to know to go into this game, they must know the basics: idea about economy, the knowledge, idea about finance, the idea about currencies, and so on and so forth. Then they pick from the data well or from the repository the knowledge that they need to know, and then they pick from there store storage the weapons that they need to have and so on and they go into this game of strategy right inflation is that big monster uh, thanos if in avengers uh, series <laughs> and this sort of thing you get what i mean yeah. so in the end the, the the education will be something fun for them because it's a strategical game and mind you strategical game now at the at the world level uh, you know some people even woke up at four o'clock and even their own uh, st uh, cap computer storage, you know, capability is as good as our university. They need a big one, you know, because that game is international, right? You all know about this. And uh, if we can do that, then our, 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 what do you call it? Our assessment would be 
the achievement in the different levels of the game. So we can design that for the first year, they can always reach at that maximum level 2, level 3. But if they are geniuses from the first year, they can reach level 10, equivalent to a consultant to a government, why do we stop him? So you can see this sort of thing can really not only measure assessment, but have an added factor of discovering uh, capabilities, competency that... We get. Why don't we do this? This is my question. Thank you. Uh, Chairperson, Salam Alaikum. Alaikum Salam, yes. Uh, Ustaz, you cannot see me, but I can see you. This is Mom. Salam Alaikum, Ustaz. <laughs> Ustaz, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, you... من يتكلم شيخ مصطفى؟ لا ما نتكلم شيخنا حبيبي لأن طرحت الأسئلة أو سؤال فهل لنا أن نجيب هذا السؤال أو أنت مكتفي بمجرد هي التعليم؟ لا 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 I would like an answer from the مشايخ. Okay جزاكم الله خير. You know I was just uh, talking about this مقاصد uh, which you raise a very interesting point. Uh, if you look at even the Sajatra. Uh, academic framework, uh, they have this uh, Al-Ghazali's uh, framework of uh, uh, this uh, five Al-Daruriyat uh, Al-Khams. And at the same time, you have those levels, which you say the level of Daruriyat, the level of Hajiyat, the level of Tahsiniyat. So it extends. Uh, it did not just stop at this Darura, which you rightly pointed out. Uh, the other thing is, um, if you look at the works of the scholars of Maqasid, even the use of the word uh, preservation, protection, even Arazi talk about developing uh, Makasi, uh, which uh, you rightly pointed out has been also mentioned. So I'm just uh, adding to uh, the, the question that you raised that, yeah, uh, there are some of those, uh, uh, what you discuss are already in those uh, framework. The only thing is whether we understood it uh, within the perspective uh, which is written by the scholar or we limit our uh, understanding like you just right said. Uh, I think the problem is maybe which you pointed out is our understanding of those makasid. <coughs> and then the other thing is, uh, mashallah, your extension of that ayah. So nurihim ayatina fil afaq wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyan lahum annahu al-haq. Uh, which was basically, uh, you know, to those who try to negate the Risala and uh, until it is shown to them that it is the truth. And uh, I, 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 maybe you will have to uh, explain more in the context of those who are already practicing Makasi, how it will be hack when they already know the, the truth. Jazakumullah khair, Ustadi Al-Aziz. <laughs> Oh, thank you. So now our question and answer almost. Uh, uh, yes, uh, to, to respond to uh, Ustaz Amidun on the on the Makasi. So this is a response as one of the editor for for Sajatra Academic Framework. Uh, for, uh, when we want to put that uh, the word, uh, okay, we we was thinking about this on the same line as what you are thinking. Okay, but given that. If we introduce something that is new, uh, then you may have a lot. Uh, we, we are afraid that instead of talking about that Sajatra academic framework, then they are uh, they are debating on the uh, on the part on on, on Makasi. In fact, even um, when we try to write, uh, rector was was asking, okay, what what should be the what should be the right word? Okay, in the preservation is something that is just minimum, but we don't want we don't want just something that is uh, something that is minimum. We have to be something uh, something that is something that is more. Okay, so so that, that we have that discussion. Okay, when, when we uh, when we write the uh, when we write the framework, and uh, in terms of the assessment, okay, we do have something that is similar currently uh, with the new uh, Unicor, uh, especially for Tilawa, okay, where students going to be tested. Okay, so they are going to be given at the uh, different level of uh, of reading of, of the Quran, and if let's say they are at the highest level, what they have to do, they have to become teacher for the uh, for the uh, for the course. Okay, so uh, something that is uh, something that is similar. So maybe we can we can we can make it bigger, okay, improve this uh, to to, uh, to to other other courses, yeah, or at the university level.
Okay, we, we are uh, almost of the end part of our today program, the morning session, and I just am giving the brief uh, concluding remarks. There was a four speaker. So first speaker, let's say Honorable Dato Hamidun, he uh, mentioned about the Sharia contribution to the humanizing education related all this aspect he already uh, explained and many aspects other things uh, he already explained our question and answer session also. Whereas our second speaker, uh, Dr. Nick in this uh, Saifol, he actually the highlighted to the technological advancement through the Industrial Revolution 4.0 how it can be away from the humanizing process. So the aspect is he technology and technology he can be deferred and indicated how it can be technology giving to us to away from the humanizing education system. Whereas our third uh, speaker brother uh, Jahid, he indicated in terms of student point of view and make the highlighted differences between previous approach of Islamization of knowledge to the current agent of humanizing education system. So he tried to address it. And finally, our dean uh, of the Kulia, uh, last speaker, and he indicated that the challenging issue of this solution when humanizing process face the any challenging and uh, explain all the aspect export of the education and how it can be helped to the world education even though the learning how to actually the know about the humanizing total process and how it can be incorporated in our curriculum newly and uh, introduce although the Makashid al Sharia and Islamization value previously also we already used but newly something how we can be mechanism to introduce deem is Brain properly. So it was actually the concluding remark from this section. So it's one actually four basic uh, speaker yes, our uh, things. So be, yes. before ending, just uh, we are ending this session, our Ibada camp day three uh, with the Surah the last. So thank you very much and ending for the day and I think we have a lunch today uh, in kitchen so we can call it about 12.30. Huh? Uh, group photo, so we are inviting to the, take the group photo for this session. Please on your camera and look to the camera side. <laughs> Yeah, the part of the